He is very famous. <laughs> don't even don't even Patrice, do that, Patrice. I you try to get heard a lot about you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you he... take a seat, Patrice? Uh, great to have you on the show finally. What? <laughs> oh yeah, sit right there. Sit that's there. that's fine. Good to meet you. When he that's was gone good for two weeks, good to meet you. When he was gone for two weeks, I wanted <laughs> I wanted you on the show, and they're saying you're in L.A. getting famous. Did he I... get famous? No. <laughs> Not really. Give me a chance to settle in and meet you guys. So, <laughs> no, because he's gonna spin you guys, this. You guys are legends, man. He knows he got a lot of phone calls about coming in while you were on that cruise. I hope uh, I, didn't, I didn't get Patrice once in those two weeks. Yeah, so, I was trying to get famous in L.A. Yeah, I had a lot of time to go do that. Yeah, I didn't. You know, yeah. no. <laughs> I usually do radio no. around yeah, yeah, yeah. from here and there. So. No. <laughs> Now, how does this work? Travis, Travis. <laughs> Travis is there. Look, he's all he's all out of place and nervous. The last time we talked to Patrice, he just did his special, which was a great special. Oh, yeah. And then he was hoping to get famous from that. And then we tried calling him when you were out, Ant, doing your cruise thing, and yeah. he, he was in LA being famous. That's yeah. what I heard. Some people are trying to uh trying to help me be famous, but it's I think I, I have a long standing it's just a trail of. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's like one or two really good good businesses that's trying to help. Yeah, but I think they they have meetings with people that go. Did you know? And then oh, oh no no. I've no. done too much, too many uh, corporate mistakes. They go like go down that road <laughs> and take that bridge right there, and then you go up to the bridge. And it's like oh, oh I remember no, burning this one. Gone. And I'm starting I to burn it. I, I got it. You know, I'm starting to. <clears throat> I'm starting to watch things that make you you just want th I want some things. Yeah. And I've been watching HD theater and uh they just show cars and cars and cars and cars. Oh. And I want a couple of cars. <laughs> yeah. Cars and I didn't good. I didn't want a couple of cars, but now I do. I want to, you know, I just learning about these fucking oh, cars. What a, kind of cars? You know, a, you know, it's just interesting. A 72 Stingray nice. yeah. is worth a million, but a 72 Stingray built in October is worth $2. Like, <laughs> and you go, wow, that shit is, <laughs> that shit is beautiful. <laughs> HD theater is beautiful, man. Wheeler and Dealer. And I just, I'm sitting there and uh, I want some yeah. stuff, you know what I'm saying? But, that's, that, wow, that's pretty yeah, sharp. Yeah. But it's just like these cars, but it's all mm. this shit, these, uh, it's just, I, you know, I want cars. Now, yeah, now you're, but I can't afford it. I'm not gonna, you know. But well, I will, I will give, I will give this, 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 uh, you know, I'll, I'll announce it one you, of these days if it works uh, out. But you know, uh, so, uh, you, you might have something, something in the pipe. Yeah, but you know, you never I, know though, right? You did, just can't even. Oh, no, you don't. Know. Did you trim down while you were getting famous? Yeah, this diabetes is starting to take its toll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's not a Jesus. good thing that you're trimming down. No, I'm saying I, I have to eat. You look trim. I, st I just stopped eating shit. Yeah. Did you lose some around. LBs? Yeah, just because you stopped eating shit, and then... You look different. But your body, I read about it. Boy, diabetes is hilariously brutal. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but it's just... It, ain't, it doesn't get the shock factor as AIDS and cancer. No, it's no, It's like no. diabetes. Good to, yeah, really? Because people, like, you know, they can control it and live with it. But it's uh, like a pain in the ass. It's a motherfucker. Oh, you like, got to have a lot of discipline. You can't even just, shit right. It's like the yeah. sugar. Sugar takes your body. Sugar's poison. <laughs> it's tasty though. <laughs> it is Which tasty. Makes no sense it's to have some sugar, so tasty. It, beef processed so sugar's poison, and regular sugar's poison. Wow. So if if your body doesn't regulate sugar correctly and get it out your system, yeah, it starts to do bad things, man. God damn. You got some shit going numb yet? Uh, not my feet. My right thumb is weird. Oh, I can't find a button on the um, iPhone if I'm, oh, really? I'm turning the iPhone a little bit. But it's not. It hasn't ravaged. I still see pretty good. You know, I can. You know, but yeah, it 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 will. Oh. And you're not gonna catch me one of these motherfuckers that's like brave about it. I'm just gonna disappear. <laughs> brave. Like an elephant. As soon as, as soon as I know, I'm gonna just write my girl a will and that's it, tell man. her to divvy it up, divvy what I got up. Which is go, shit. go to the elephant walk graveyard, off. just walk off somewhere. Yeah, you think I'm gonna sit around and be brave about it and be uncomfortable? Why George Carlin's face blew up, looked like a was it, but he was like a, a salamander. No, nah, but he, <laughs> he whatever was wrong with him, his heart was going yeah, right. And then when your so heart wasn't go, pumping as well, so you get yeah, a lot yeah, of water yeah. in you. You so just you your love, feet uh, swell up, your head swells oh, up. Jesus. What is it called? A edema, edema, maybe. So. 
You can't pump the fluids as well. So where do you go? And then fucking, if I jerk off twice a week, you know, I got to fucking plan to fuck my girl because if I jerk off <laughs> twice, <laughs> it's weird. That, that's say- it for the end of the day. Really? It's fucking just, is done. It's weird you're saying all this because you look really healthy. Well, you know. You, you trim down, It's man. called rock bottom. <laughs> <laughs> It's called, it's called like if I was a uh, dr- drug addict, I'm like, you know, all my veins are shut down and I have to fucking, hit, no more vein, bottom. I'm shooting a vein in my fucking taint, I'm shooting a needle <laughs> the only, in the vein in my taint and I'm like, I gotta stop this shit. <laughs> the only fucking vein left. He had his oh, diabetes oh. bottom. Yeah, getting up to piss 75 times a night, it just, oh. it just fucking wears you down. When you're young, you just, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that it'll never go away. Did, yeah. Did you really tweet this after Jesus. the Celtics lost last night? Was that? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, it, it's, with the, it's with the A at the end, so I'll, I'll deal with this. Well, Danny Ainge, we'll be sending a few folks to the nigga glue factory, and maybe Ray Allen will get to stud. Yep. That's it. Sam, hold on. It's done. Yeah, where Stay you, close. Sam's trying to slip out. Fucking Celtics looked awful in that overtime, man. They had a, they, they're 50 they played, years old, man. But they played the Heat t- pretty tough the whole they're, game. But they're not pussies. They're just, they just old. They're old, so they ran out of uh, yeah, steam. Man, it, it's, not everybody's Bernard Hopkins. The motherfuckers is... Shaq is fat. That old, that <laughs> Shaq is a seven foot two inch fat man. Fat like, man. <laughs> and he used to be Diesel, right? They used to call him Diesel. They, right? When he was young, boy, he teared his whole building down with his fucking one blow. <laughs> but now he does look like a fat. He's man. He's just a fat man, face swollen, still trying to be funny. Oh, mustache. Shit. And I'm gonna tell you when you start getting old, when your mustache gets irrelevant. <laughs> when you don't know how to fucking trim your mustache in a young, relevant way, get the fuck out of town. Go fuck it. Go fuck yourself with your mustache growing inside your mouth. You don't even give a fuck no more. Your mouth. <laughs> you got old man mustache, Shaq's mustache. You got a full man chew. <laughs> fucking fat fucker. Like, but he's just not. He just he just needs to go. Fuck it, I'm getting scared the Heat might win this thing. I don't no, want No, the Heat is going to win. Oh, I don't shit. want the whole I thing. I don't want to see that, yeah. man. It's going to happen. You're saying that. It, it, it's, it's just LeBron is the greatest role player ever. If you're into basketball at all, it, you know, you got Jordan Pippen. He's ten times better than Pippen. Mm-hmm. But Wade's not he's, Jordan. He's J- Wade is Wade is the Jordan oh, of what, them. I understand that, but he's not Jordan. No, he's not he's Jordan. He's almost Jordan. But that's what I'm and, saying. And LeBron is way better than Pippen. And LeBron physically is way better than Jordan, but right, he just agreed. ain't got the fucking the mind. Heart. Yeah. So he's like, go sick him, uh-huh. LeBron, and let Dwayne shoot at the end. You know what I'm saying? They, they can't beat them. They just can't. And even Chris Bosh. As as fruity as he is, and 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 he's, not, he's just a fruity guy. He's so uncomfortable to look at because he's fruity, and you and you know, you know, you can't you know get sued saying oh he's gay, but he's just a fruity guy, and it's he's very <laughs> flamboyant, he's a flamboyant guy. And I'm not saying he's gay because you don't have to be, you know, but it's the guy is, yeah. but he's even better than any of the other Celtics secondary people. Right. He's a first guy, and and at the end of the day. They just too old to fuck with Miami Heat uh, and this and their role players. Miami's role players are just as good as anybody else's role players in Holy. So and they just uh, <laughs> scrambled to get those guys to start the season. But look, man, it, it, to, to be fair to Boston or to be fair to the Black Celtics, the Black Celtics, the Celtics sucked for a long time. This is my beef with Boston sports fans. We stunk in a lot of things for a lot of years. And even the Bruins fans mm-hmm. don't get uh, don't get uppity. Just enjoy what you have. We had a good three and a half year run when they they drafted. I mean, they they put these old men together for the Celtics. Mm-hmm. They place. They still play at a high level, but they're fucking in their thirties. And when you're a sports player, you just there is no <laughs> midlife crisis. Midlife crisis is thirty two. Wow. <laughs> oh shit. Kobe You're can't even done. beat it. Kobe's old. Everybody's old. Yeah, Lakers got swept. <laughs> Did you see that coming? <laughs> Did I see? No. Of course but, not. Dallas is a good team, though. But Paul Gasol's fruity, too. And Lamar we, we, Odoms, we find out. Pussy whipped. He's, that's what happens. And, and Paul, and you're not talking wrong. Paul is mad at Kobe. People don't want you to say, like, people got to speculate, but he's mad at Kobe because Kobe's wife. 
convinced his fiance to leave him. And, what? And he hates Kobe. Now. Oh shit! This all that's what happened drama. to him. Why would the it was wives drama. get involved with that he, shit? Kobe's what? fucking wife. And is this see, real? Yes. And Powell is fruity because one day they the whole league turned against Powell and said he's he's soft, right? Right. And Powell went. He didn't go fuck them. He his his response was, you know, he he put his head to the side on his own <laughs> shoulder and kind of went. They, they're just jealous, and I don't pay no attention. Like. <laughs> you, un you undude uh, fruit. Like, you fuck you. And his brother's an animal. Yeah. His big his baby brother is another fatty, but he's <laughs> seven feet tall fat man who but he's twenty one or some goofy shit like that. So he's he's the the he's like a, a Spanish shack, but Pow got angry about this girl and then Lamar's on a show where his wife is telling him how to who who his friends are right. and and how much money to spend? And, and, and she looks oof. at, she looks at his career like it's kind of a cute thing he does. Isn't that weird? Well, he's on the she, fucking she's, a, she's an elitist, and he's a fucking nigga. Yeah. she's a nigga. <laughs> but Ed, it's it, you got. She's for money. I've seen some clips, and and she's like, oh yeah, you, you oh you're going to practice. It's like really? a cute little thing he does. And he, he's not, playing for the Los Angeles. Lakers. And he lost yeah. his swagger. He sure. That's what happens. You listen has. to a bitch oh. for any reason. My, my, that's probably why, why my my toes are hurting. Because oh. even my girl told me to take my medicine. I'm like, bitch, mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather fucking have my swagger and no feet than fucking you infiltrating <laughs> and telling me what's Sweat. good and what's not. Now I gotta listen to you fucking give me advice. A footless swagger. What the fuck did this reverse? <laughs> when, did, when did rank and file fucking reverse? <laughs> your Celtics are done, bro. Though. Yeah, no, they're done. They're fucking done, and I I don't have. I didn't know that Kobe shit either. Some good inside crap. Yeah, man, pal. But they, I mean, of course, it's speculation because no one, no one ever tells the, yeah. the fucking goddamn. Well, the LeBron truth. James mom thing is still speculation, right? That never official. That came never out was it, was official. But you see her behavior in Miami. She's smacking people in the face. She's, you know, and and it probably wasn't. And the reason why they're not hitting Delonte West in his face in his game and, and knocking him is because it's probably the, his mom's fault. Like, uh, she's aggressive. Mm -hmm. She probably like, baby, come here. You know, and he's like, oh, Miss shit. James, like, yeah. it's two sides of every story. Like, uh, would you think a motherfucker is that crazy to go, Psst, come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever her first name is, Ro Roletta. I don't know his first name, but, uh, Roletta. hey, Miss James, come here. Let me talk to you for a minute. Let me fuck you real quick. Like, th that, you can see her going, because she smacked the guy in the face and go, do you know who the fuck I mm -hmm. am? So, if, <laughs> if you got a fucking, some dude's like, you know, he's walking around. She's like, I like, I like, uh, and she's, I guess she's fucking my age. She's in her 40s or I, some I, shit. I don't think my mama minded much what he was doing to her. <laughs> <laughs> like Sling Blade. She, she, she fucking walks in. The guy's banging his mom and he kills them both. She might have I been aggressive, I, man. She, she didn't mind what he was doing to her. <laughs> <laughs> she can't be more than early 40s. No, she's very young. <laughs> and she has nothing better to do. And she's it's walking around be a nightmare like, for I'm, LeBron. and she looks exactly like him. Oh, yeah, so it's does. like, you oh. know who I am? And it's like, you. she's smacking people in the face and da-da-da. So, I mean, I can see. And he looks like she's from Cleveland. And uh, that's where Bone Thugs and Harmony's from. Yeah. And she probably grew up listening to Bone Thugs and Harmony. And and Delonte West looks like one of the Bone Thugs and Harmony motherfuckers, the the the, the Thuggish Ruckus Bone guys, with the fucking light skin face and ah <laughs> 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 Bone Thugs and Harmony. She looks like he looks like the guy. Delonte West looks like the guy, all the way to the left. Really? Except for he got red hair and a bunch of tattoos. So she probably thought he was cute as a motherfucker, sexy. She's like, come here. <laughs> Why would he do that? Hiding though? behind the popcorn. Psst, come here. Why the fuck did he do that? It could have been jealousy. It could have been the fact that he's a dude. It's hard to turn down pussy. LeBron's mom. He might, if you get pregnant, man, to... can you imagine the fucking loins? Well, he has a little kid I, from. That's what I'm hitting at. Maybe you want to take a shot at the lottery. <laughs> that you can pump out one more, <laughs> one more LeBron, and, and he gets <laughs> super mad with that shit. And he goes, "Fuck this! I don't need to do this basketball thing. <laughs> I'll let my little fucking son do it." I'm telling you, man. Maybe. But he's but see the difference between him and fucking Paul Gasol. Is LeBron still dropping forty? And it don't matter. No, you know what I'm saying. I'm getting scared. Dallas is Dallas is pretty strong. I just I just don't want to see the Heat win this fucking. Thing, they're gonna man. they're gonna win. It. They are going to win 
the whole fucking they're, thing. They're peaking at the right time, right? They're going to win. I mean, they're just going to. Hey, yeah. Sam came in here because uh, we had Larry King on yesterday, Patrice. On this show? Yeah, yeah. it was pretty cool. I got to be honest with you. It was really cool shit. Did y'all fucking dig into him? Or you, uh, he, no, you, let him, you let him be an old man and just fade away? He, well, he, he nah, got man. He, 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 he held his own. He he killed. He was hilarious. He got he in there great and told story. I'm sure you had the, the Larry King guys. Everybody called. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't do, do Larry that? King. We, it was hard because... He, it was hard to get in at times because he was telling stories and, and all that. But we Good stories, too? He had stories about Lenny Bruce, Jackie Gleason on the Jackie Gleason <coughs> party train. He uh, had a Jimmy Hoffa story uh, when Jimmy Hoffa was alive. That he remembered? Yeah, Fuck I know. Yeah. <laughs> Who else? Don Rickles. He, uh, he was telling us about Frank Sinatra. What um, was the best story? What was the best what, story? What was the yeah. pop story? What was the wow factor? I don't know. I think the wow factor was asking him about that goddamn where were the groceries after the rape story he told. Oh, Remember yeah. that clip? What, what did he say? It Remember was... the clip where the girl got abducted and raped horribly? <laughs> but, in the car. But she was abducted coming out of a grocery store, so there were groceries in the car. And she Larry tells goes, the horrid what happened story. to the food? She tells the horrid story of being raped, but in, in the middle clip, of it, right? yeah, in the played. middle of it, yeah, she says, we like, for him. so I had the groceries in the front seat, and he came in, and he started grabbing me, and he handcuffed me to the steering wheel and sexually abused me. And, he, and the first question, he's like, what happened to the food? What did he say? Uh, let's play it. Fuck it. Okay. You're here Can for I, a while. What, what did he? What did he say after he? Here's the whole to thing. To you guys. Yeah, yeah. Let's... No, we got the okay, clip good, from yesterday. Good, 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 I think good. the whole thing is four minutes. Uh, just it's, oh, okay. it's worth listening to. Okay. From yesterday, uh, Larry King. He was just great. And uh, here we go. <laughs> I have to ask you something that I've been toiling over since I heard it. Toil. This was uh, uh, something where, where you said something during an interview where I couldn't fathom this. It was a woman. She was talking about a horrific rape that had happened. And it was in her car, I believe. And she had gone shopping, uh, grocery shopping. And she describes this horrible situation of, of this sexual assault. And you actually asked, your first question to her was, what did you do with the groceries? Do you remember that one? No, but it would have been something and, I'd ask. Yeah, what happened I, I, I to was, the groceries? I was like, <laughs> or, but that, that would be... is probably the most inappropriate thing you could have asked in, at the moment. She, she was taken back by, I would love by the question. to know your mindset behind something I like that. I have no memory of that. I swear to God. Do you have the clip? I'm trying to find yeah, it. Yeah, because I would love My to find it. My only guess, if you have, I hope you have the clip because then I could have an explanation. Put it in it's context, shot. right. Put it in context. Now, maybe. Oh, why can't I find it? Okay. Yeah, pop that in. Track 18. Oh. This was the, uh. Yeah, well, I got, I got the long version. So. All right, oh, okay, that's, long. that's good. That'll put it in context. It was about a minute. Oh, it's got to queue it. up. As you know. I came out of the grocery store and got my car, Philip knocked on my window and said, uh, you know, I can't seem to get my car to start. It's cold. Do you think you'd give me a ride? You know, which way are you going? And, of course, he was going to go anyway, any which way I was going. And so uh, I did. did. Dude, why did you let him in a car? I don't know. It was the worst decision I've ever made, I think. It truly was. What happened when he got in? When he got in... Um, I filled his hands with a lot of food that I they had in the front seat anyway. I tried to engage him in... He was holding your food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was. Uh, I tried to engage him in small conversation on the, on the trip. I tried to stay on the main street, and when I got ready to turn, he said, uh, well, where I'm staying is right up the road here. So I took him a little further up, and then uh, just turned around the corner and pulled over, and he slammed my head into the steering wheel and pulled out handcuffs. He took my keys out, threw them on the floor, and pulled out handcuffs and handcuffed me and, and uh, said, I just want a piece of ass. If, you're, if you be good, you won't get hurt. What did he do with the food? He put uh, it on the floor, I guess. That was a very... I know, I was. Oh, stop right okay, there. Okay, okay. Now, you see, you guys, <laughs> take him out of context. Now, I was... You took it totally out of context. I finally I'm get an answer, up, though. This is fantastic. Wait, hold it. Of We've course. been obsessed okay. with this wait one, Larry. Wait a minute. Wait, obsessed. Obsessed. We've obsessed. played that clip a lot. He's, you played a lot? Yes. yes. That was great questioning. Okay. <laughs> I got her in the car. Finally. Yeah. Why did she let the guy in the car? Okay. Great I got her question. driving, right? Now yeah. I got her driving. Now. now, she said there was food in the car. Yeah. The guy, by the way, is I, I'm trying to remember this case because it was... 1976. It was uh, no, Philip no, no, no. Garrido. Yeah. Garrido. Mm -hmm. Garrido. Was later charged with harboring... A, he hit a woman for years... He's still alive somewhere. The Garrido case. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. He denied it. His lawyer was denying it. So part of a good police investigation would be you said there was food in the front of the car. 
right? Mm -hmm. He's knocking you out of the car. He's taking you out of the car. What happened to the food? <laughs> Did he knock the food over? Was the food found at the scene? One of my great moments. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, investigative That's reporting. That's a whole series. You're taking another. She, see, you ask it as just as if I, a woman said I was raped. What happened to the food? <laughs> That's not what happened. So you guys are paying. Is he uh, turning uh, this on? I think it is. can't happen. So what you did, it on us. What you did uh, you've been playing that for a long a while. time. A while. Uh, for a while. That was terrible radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, now at least we know you were, because she seemed like a sympathetic kind of character at the time, but you were actually trying to trip her up, it seemed. I didn't try to make her unsympathetic. We felt I'm like you were to obsessed the, with the food. I'm, I'm I wasn't obsessed. <laughs> I'm trying to get the whole story. Yeah. How did the guy get in? He's knocked her out. Right. He's, she's driven to a place. She's kind of, he got around the corner. Mm -hmm. He's got the food. Remember, where is the food? Where is the food? front seat? Right. She said back seat. I never asked the question. Right. Okay. He's got to knock her out. He's got to bang her head against the door. Right. Get her out of the car. Right. Mm -hmm. What happened to the food? She was knocked out. She don't know. I'm a detective. I'm a. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back live. No, no. Now, Patrice, Patrice is shocked. What's, what's your take on that, dude? <clears throat> I learned a great word in my life called sophistry. Yeah. And it's the it's it's senseless sense. It's is basically something that is horse shit, but it makes sense. <laughs> you know he's full of shit, but when he said, where's the food? It was as dumb as it was, but yes. you go, I get, I get it, like, but I still, who gives a fuck? Right. Th this we all fucked up. Okay, let's make sense out of that question. But where's the food? What difference did it make, uh, Larry? How? What was the next level of the investigation? If you was the detective and asked where the food was, what the fuck would that mean? I think he's but trying to trip her up, saying like, because his lawyer and he, himself was saying that he, the guy was innocent. Uh, he's trying to trip her up, like, all right, well, he did all this, so what happened to the food then? He moved the food. Exactly. The food was probably all over the floor of the car. Who he fucked me on top of the pudding. Right. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. He was, that's how I was sucking his dick by force. He was hitting me in the back of the head with a fresh loaf of bread. And I think anyone would assume that. <laughs> he was mashing a grapefruit right. in my face. And going, <laughs> man, man, suck, man, suck man. my dick, bitch. Man. <laughs> my bananas ended up on his heels. <laughs> and I, I think anyone would assume that. And he slid that. away. Right. He slid. <laughs> He, he was eating potato chips as he was raped. What, I, like, what is the his... The question had had to have been asked because but everyone assumed that was the food shit. just went yeah, all over the Because he's not a detective. He's an interviewer. No. And he fucking had no reason to say that except for he's an old man. You know what? Who, right. He was probably interviewing with, with his, hand, his chin in his hand and he just was like... Dozing off. Thinking about the food. And the right? last yeah. thing he heard was the food. So it's like, what happened to the food? Where to go? But he's been around long enough that he spun it right back at it us. It was genius. Is now you understand how people who can think a guy is so inept could yeah. be, be on the air for eighty years and w w basically without without incident, right? Mm -hmm. And have kids at eighty mm -hmm. and fucking he goes <laughs> well, <laughs> and you go, wait a minute, wait, give yeah. me two seconds to tell you you full of shit. He was great. He he went with everything. Yesterday. Talked about how he was, was married. I uh, eight. I asked, I asked him about being married eight times. Eight, eight times, and he said he'd probably in his whole life only been in love maybe three times, and that that it, when he was married, like there were times uh, where he was going into his wedding and just knew this was Dumb. horse shit and wasn't going to work. And he sounded sharp and funny though, man. He, he yeah, was yeah. extremely sharp. Not the guy we got to know at the end of yeah, his career. Yeah, yeah. What's that picture of him uh, being arrested? What what that's, happened that's there? That's a classic. That's been around. That's a from while. Uh, I guess 1971. Mm -hmm. What what was he arrested for? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, stealing food from a rape victim. And the other thing, so Sam asked him in the ten o'clock hour, or right after the appearance, about the skateboard dude. Right. That was our Patrice, second biggest like horse that? shit question. Oh, we don't have the original. The, the clip? one I remember that, that that was weird to me was the Sharon Tate hole. Sharon Tate. Thing. Oh man, the Sharon Tate one. That one got to that one was oh. like wow. That was uh, a man that so brutally murdered your sister. It's like well, he never murdered my sister. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, what I meant, and then his explanation of what he meant was such horse shit. <laughs> and you, but he but he's he's uh he's uh Teflon. Some people are amazingly Yeah. Yeah. I would say Bill O'Reilly's one of those people too. You just can't 
You can't get. You can't get them. Get anything on them. You just can't get them. Yeah. You want to get them, but you you, you can't. Mm -hmm. And I think Larry has put a lot more into being able to come up with excuses for what he does than what he does. (laughs) And and he comes off too like this guy you don't want to like bother. Yeah, yeah. You know this Dan rather kind of fatherly. Yeah, yeah. Why are you gonna do that? And he's probably sitting there. He's probably very happy because the Pierce, uh, what's his name, is tanking. Yeah, yeah. It's, Ratings aren't good for peers. No. Hmm? Not good, yeah. They're not good. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I think he's too English. Yeah, people don't want to hear that shit. shit. They don't want to hear English Stick to shit. telling people they can't sing. You ever watch uh, CNN or MSNBC or any of these news stations when they go to the, like, British fucking bureau mm-hmm. for, like, an hour? It's, like, news from England. Yeah, I don't know why and they they're just that. And it's like... It's all about America. And the subways <laughs> are looked after. <clears throat> There's a man down there with a machine gun. He's making sure nothing happens. <laughs> and you're like, well, I can't listen to the, this guy's cadence is pissing me off. We're just trying so to. So, him doing that interview show is like. Yeah, it's just. Uh, uh, it's all right. It's some limey. I watched it a couple of times. It's and, just all right. Yeah, it's but just it's there. there. You know, I, I think Larry had a factor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and well, it's was... great to see a guy who, who used to tell people they ain't shit. Yeah. Uh, be not shit, you know, himself. <laughs> and just to say, oh, shit. I'm really my talent was just telling people that they weren't talented, or, right? Right. Or was now he's in the shine and it's just tanking because people mm-hmm. are like, and I don't think you know, but but who knows? Because I think you know uh, uh, America. This is why I'm quitting, you know, comedy. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah, I'm on the way out. Um, Done. It's the f- it's the fact. You know, I watched the Bin Laden. Of course, we all. Seen oh the thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um. You know, there's the conspiracy, uh, what they call conspiracy nuts, and yeah. there's whatever. And I, and the thing that gets me is that when there is one little question that makes you go, "What's what?" Uh-huh. That we don't galvanize and say, "No, no, no, you're not allowed to say anything else till we cover this." Give oh, me all right, right. Give, give me, me a straight answer. A straight here. answer because. Flushing Bin Laden down the ocean <laughs> like he's cocaine <laughs> from the Goodfellas. You don't you don't feel that that was the, <clears throat> it, it? It's I, it, it, it doesn't cover up. it doesn't prove anything. It you know somebody like Hannity to make me sound like a complete idiot if I went on the show and went he flushed him down in the fucking ocean. It's just you go. There's nothing that just makes you. <laughs> That makes it, you go, what? Does it just reek of cover up of it, something? It, it, but it does. Yeah. But how do here's my can we focus one day on one issue that bothers us as a country in terms of this whole okay, let's say But they'll oh, never sorry, answer it. So if let's say this. Whatever news you follow, because what it is is okay, I listen to Fox or listen to CNN or listen to uh the conspiracy guys. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> which is you know, my source of news. Sure. So uh, there has to be something where we go, okay, let's take out all the, the fucking shit, right? And just concentrate on And let's on concentrate on our this. own logic mm-hmm. in, in our own scenario. And in anyone's scenario, do you fucking throw Bin Laden in the ocean? In <laughs> any of your own scenarios. <laughs> I love Patrice's take on this. Not, not the news is telling you this. Because Fox will just go... The, the difference to me between like the Alex Joneses, the the Webster Tarpleys, the fucking uh, Farrakhan, and uh, and Alan Watt, those are the four guys I get my news from. Yeah. Okay. There's always a way for you to go fuck you, and then you go look it up. Yeah. It's always that. It's historical. Mm-hmm. The regular news does not allow you to fuck with history. <laughs> if you if you see people that go the Gulf of Tonkin. People go, Danny dismisses that. Yeah, yeah. Shh, that's not the issue. Go for talking. <laughs> Suck a dick. But, but, but there's no weapons of mass destruction. We're there for nothing. Shut up. You don't support the troops. And you're just babbling. <laughs> but you go, wait a, wait a fucking minute. Yeah. They, the, the go for talk is fake. We died. The motherfuckers died. It was fake. But they go, suck my dick. So the thing about the conspir- quote unquote conspiracy guys, you can go fuck you and go look that shit up and go, holy shit, this shit, is, this happened. It was fake. The, the, the. So my thing is, OK, fuck listening to people. Now just go with your own uh, with your own fucking mentality 
there's a lot of things that's going wrong with this Bin Laden now, shit. Now, what you, what's your take on the whole thing of uh, the Muslims have to be fucking disposed of, Horse now whatever it is, in, in a day? <laughs> really? and... Let me tell you something. If you Google any criminal, baby face Nelson, <laughs> there's a picture of the guy that shot him in his face taking a... Taking a look at what the fuck I did, shot. <laughs> You're right, yeah. Bonnie and Clyde, that bitch, they will never show a bitch dead, but they'll, you go Bonnie and Clyde, bullets all in her face. <laughs> and fucking. G Man and, and, and G Man. Man. With a Tommy with a Tommy gun. Tommy gun. <laughs> like, like, so. so uh, break it down. What do you think happened? The, uh, for, this is. Break it down. In conspiracy please. world. Right. Okay. No, this, in Patrice's world. In, but this is, I get a lot of my shit. In my world, you're, okay, you're what do I thinker. believe? You're a thinker. Yeah, yes. what's your... I believe. All right, here we go. But I don't have any fucking endorsements to lose, so yeah, I'll okay. just say it. <laughs> it, it. I believe, and this is the thing, you can't prove it. I believe that he had lent himself, that, that Bin, Bin Laden, because if this is the history of it. Uh-huh. We were in cahoots. We're in cahoots with everybody. And this is why Muslims hate America. Not because of we living in America and, and live how we want to live and do radio. Ow. <laughs> living in America. <laughs> <Ow. laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> they can't hate that song. They got to dance to that oh, fucking song. You love that song. Because there's no song that Come they on. do that's better than living in America. No. Me and I mean, Hugh. Really? That's Me and I mean, Hugh is better than living in America. Rocky's now. fucking working out to it. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. This is fucking great. You can't hate. You can't hate on this song. I don't. I don't let's not bomb today. Let's listen no, to today. this. Enjoy. Because you know, I enjoy living in America we myself. We don't like uh, Americans. Uh, we want to kill them. Uh, but all oh, this song, James Brown. Living in America. Ow, ow. The, the, the reason they hate us is because yeah. we support the evil regimes that ah. so egypt and 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 all these like dictators who who suppress their people yeah we help them right we make sure that they stay in power so that's why they hate us first of all i think and listen there's a new bin Laden that they already setting up this guy that had dinner at the white house <laughs> uh al asari or something he's mm. he's the new he's had dinner at the white house the, the, yeah they've been talking about it. <laughs> right. he had dinner at the white house like in 2002 because he was one of the good ones. Now he's the next Bin Laden. This guy from Yemen. I think it's Al Al-Sari or something. I think Bin Laden was in cahoots with them a long time. I think he was getting sick. I think they needed a war. Uh, and I think that he, they set him up in this compound, okay, and let him live his last days out being the face of evil. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think he died, somewhere because who's to prove that he wasn't they fucking caught him and threw him in the ocean like i said like how you would flush cocaine down the toilet when the cops kick in your fucking we door we needed that terrorist karen the, the, <laughs> karen <laughs> karen yeah, how could you flush the they wouldn't have found him we needed that terrorist I'm sorry <laughs> That, do you understand? The only bad guy so we had. What I'm saying, this is all conjecture, <laughs> but I'm saying what I believe. So it was just time to tell the world that he was dead. It was time, and it was time for Obama because he's not done yet. Mm -hmm. he's, his mission ain't done, and this helped him a lot. He, they didn't count on something that I knew about. But why would he? From is that r white racism is more powerful than he thought it fucking was. Really? So now he has to almost become Bush. <laughs> yeah, he is kind of slipping. Gun-ho, and we killed the motherfucker. And that white racism you're correct about, because his poll numbers only went up a tiny bit after because that. Because I heard if some If that happened with George uh, W., his fucking ratings would have went to the they roof. They would have made sure that you could do four terms as I think president. Obama. <laughs> I think Obama only went up three, maybe four points. Because white racism He's is only is, at 52%. It's, it's a lot more, it's deep, man. It's, it's, and so <clears throat> I think, personally... They they needed a face to this, okay? 
he he's not only was public enemy number one. I, people would argue he's he was next to Hitler in terms of right. He just didn't have the numbers. Yeah. His cachet. Right. Yep. Of of what he wanted to do. Yeah. Of, of his evil. E evil. Evil. So like to say. so you go you go look. I think he was a sick old man. I think he died a long time ago, or he died in that place. They staged that shit, plastered he's dead, so Obama could get elected. They're going to put another guy in. And here's one of the things, one of the guys, uh, Webster Tarpley, who I like. like him. He's, he's just one of those machines, <laughs> yeah, those yeah. conspiracy, and, but he's a historian, though. He goes, look, and he said this shit in 2007. He said, I'm nervous about this guy because... See, the thing about Bush, and they called it the neocons, the things about Bush, he was a cowboy. He was like, we're going to go in there and fucking mm. bomb him, fuck him. But <clears throat> Obama's not that kind of guy. So basically what he's saying is, look, the people he worked for, which is the bankers, okay, they, are, they want, Britain and America wants to keep power. They want this, this white people to be powerful. I, I, I tell people this. They're not going to let brown people <clears throat> rule the world. They'll destroy it first. These white, <laughs> these white bankers, man. <clears throat> so basically, this guy, uh, fucking Brzezinski, who is the face, he's the puppet master. He wants to stop China and Russia. And if he can, he wants to pit them against each other to destroy each other. And what mm. they would do is, now they're talking about going to Pakistan. They start in trouble with Pakistan. Yeah. Because how could you harbor this guy? Mm -hmm. What that what they're going to do with that is take Pakistan so they can strategically have things. They want to control Pakistan because Pakistan's friendly with China. But wouldn't Pakistan have said something like, hey, uh, by the way, this guy's been dead for fucking years. We know it. But they have. Wait, wait. And, and you remember this lady that got fucking the prime minister of uh, Pakistan? It was a woman. Yeah. She said, oh. She goes, um, my, 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 what was the guy with the fucked up head? Looked like the, the, the guy they caught and he was in a T-shirt. Oh, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. They caught him and he was a big timer. Yeah, yeah. They, she says out loud, this lady, uh, uh, fucking her name, the prime minister, she was murdered in 2007. Right. She said, Bin Laden's dead. He, yeah. he was killed by some... We could, you, we could see that online. Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. She, she said, Bin Laden's dead. She was dead. <laughs> <laughs> After she said that, they <laughs> murdered that bitch. Let me let me go with what Ann said. Oh, Hold on, shit. let me go with what Ann said though. I mean, the Republicans and the Democrats fucking at this point hate each other. So why wouldn't there be a Republican saying, "Look, I know the deal here. Fuck that. Obama's uh, Osama's been dead for years." Why would they tell us the truth? Ooh. No, the <laughs> Republicans to get a little uh, foothold on 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 the because power because they're thing. in cahoots. So uh, oh, they so, don't. Wait, wait, wait. All right, all right. I have an open mind here. So the Republicans and the Democrats, as they show on TV, they fucking basically can't get along and hate each other. They're actually in cahoots behind the scenes. It's staged. It's the bank runs the it's, fucking show. It's divide, uh, divide and conquer. So that's why you, they need racism. That's why anybody who ever comes close ever to galvanizing the people. Yeah. They get murdered. They people. Martin Luther King was dangerous because he had white people going, wow. <laughs> this is hmm. This is wow, and he was doing it out of love. Barack did it because it was they need. The next thing they're gonna do is, if you notice, they do a lot of shit in Africa. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's the Sudan, but yeah. it's under it's under the under peace. But Sudan gives China. Uh, evidently, and I, I just get my reports. I, I'm just going. I didn't go over there and test the fucking oil. <laughs> but supposedly Sudan gives China a lot of oil, maybe a third of its oil. So we got to go in these places to take these places. That's why dictators are so important to us, because we can't fuck with a democracy. So right. we need Pakistan to have a dictator so we could say, hey, do this, motherfucker. Well, that's why that's we pay why $3 billion. We, exact, that's why we hate as a country, we're mm. supposed to hate, I'm a Dillajad yeah. from Iran, and and uh, uh, the motherfucker from down the uh, uh, South America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Chavez. Yeah. Chavez, right? Because they they're dictators who actually look out for their people. They're not corrupt. So why, why can't we turn them? Because they're not corrupt. They say fuck America, and they work with China, because China has just as much power as we do. We are horrified of fucking China. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is get somehow get 
a foothold and have a standing army and get control of any place that, where the oil, where people can go fuck America and sell their oil to China. We want to control those places so that then China has to then fight with Russia How? to get their oil from, like, Siberia or if the Saudis want to deal with them, they just make it so it's a... Because well, China like, needs oil. How come all these conspiracies pretty much come back for, for the past, for many years now, to oil, yet we are fucked with oil and paying through the nose and, and we never have enough... And, and it's like, because, is that part of the ploy? But here's the thing that, kill, that gets me. I, I think it's an easy answer. Yeah. They don't give a fuck, like, about any of us. Oh, yeah. That's... And the reason that they don't, they didn't, look it, don't forget, I, I buy a lot of sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> here's the pimp game. I think I might have said the pimp game is this. It, whatever you into buying, okay, I remember my sneakers were $30. Yeah. You buy a sneaker for $30, and, and I remember my mother bought me a pair of sneakers for $30, and she was like, damn. Then what they do is they hit you with the $60 right after the 30 You go, oh, Lord, I can't afford sneakers no more. <laughs> and as, just when you're getting ready, they find out who got money and who don't. They lower it back down to 40 Uh huh. So you go, oh, I can buy, I can buy sneakers. But they just bumped it up $10. Gas in 2003 was 99 cent a gallon. It's four dollars now. Why didn't they just bump it up to four? Because we would revolt. Right, right. It's but it's now like it's else. a slow, slow burn. fucking. Yeah. You just do it slowly. The slow burn. They they just have the appreciation to know people enough mm -hmm. that people want it with Vaseline. You know what I'm saying? So they slip it in slow, and you go, okay, 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 and they take so it out. So pretty much everything is a lie. Everything's a lie, and, and and so how does this lie perpetuate without uh, somebody really coming out and leaking it? If they do, but we dismiss them. Anybody who says, hey, this is the anti-idea of what happened. Like, people, look, here's the problem. The problem is they're willing, they have a, a term, it's called, they have two terms for what we're dealing with now. Yeah. One is blowback, the other term is is what we all know, which is uh, collateral damage. Uh -huh. Why would you even invent a fucking term called collateral damage, which is innocent people die? Uh -huh. uh, basically, hey, this number of innocent people, <laughs> this number of innocent people uh, die so that we can, we, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's, it's innocent how do you? It's like it's uh, like okay, this many yeah. people like they they it's calculated really the cost of doing business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we, we've heard that over the years. I got it. So, I mean, Wait, I don't want to get past the Osama thing. Okay, okay. Uh, Al Qaeda comes out and says he's dead. So what's that about then? Al Qaeda supposedly, why, why? and this is what you believe. This is why. This. All right, but why wouldn't they have said, "Look, he, we all know because he was they, dead years Al ago." Al Qaeda, and this is where it starts to sound crazy. Right. It, it's C I A. Created CIA run B Bin Laden fought Russia for us. Yeah, we know. The whole story about him going fuck you and but uh, that's what they told us. But that Al Qaeda was created and funded by fucking America. So what was yeah, in it for us? That outrageous back then. A because... bunch of fucking money. Yeah, but then he had to live the rest of his life in kind of shitty terms. But he was that dying anyway. Sucked. Th that's what they showed so us. Did they show him with his legs crossed, chilling in that compound? That's what they said. This is what I'm saying. It's just oh, what you they think he was say. looking much better than that, but dude, they, he was chilling. But they hey, show hold, you the footage. Hold, that's hold the shitty. phone. Hold the phone here. Okay. The Russian thing. Obviously, it's like yeah, we go. Oh, the CIA was funding uh, uh, Bin Laden and mm -hmm. Al Qaeda. It's the same people. Um, uh, when when they were the uh, what Mujahideen or whatever yeah, it was yeah. when they were fighting the Russians, mm -hmm. but yet yeah, that isn't. Th why do people think that's so outrageous? They sometimes our allies become our enemies and vice versa. Okay. Back then we hated the fucking Russians. Yeah, we still we do. wanted to fuck with them. They wanted to fuck with us. Mm -hmm. So whenever they got involved in some military action, we supported the opposing team, okay. which at that point was bin Laden and the rest of the people in uh, freedom fighters in Afghanistan. Uh, then things changed. Mm -hmm. There is no more Soviet Union. So we became the bad guys. And, of course, now they're, they're going to come after us. Uh, 
So what? Why is that so unbelievable? No, it's I don't. Like, I don't not believe it. I don't even not believe that. I don't. I'm. I'm. This is. It's. It's what I go with is like what makes sense. Now some uh-huh. of it you go. Like look, I don't believe in aliens. Uh-huh. I don't believe in this thing where they're trying to get us to believe aliens because NASA just released. Area Fifty One. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not with it. Every but time. <laughs> I'm going to say if you tell me two plus two is four, uh-huh. and I know it is, but then. You shove marbles in your ass. And I go, <laughs> Jesus, Anthony shoves marbles in his ass? That doesn't discredit two plus two is four. Okay. So I, I'll let motherfuckers to, to fight this battle. And I'm going to tell you if, you, if you know Alex Jones or if you know Alan Watt, if you listen to Farrakhan, if you listen to Webster Tarpley, all four of those dudes have the tenacity of crazy. Right. And you need that tenacity. But it doesn't necessarily mean what they're saying is bullshit. I don't bullshit. have the tenacity of crazy. But because you need that. Because I do comedy and I see the faces. The faces of people who just go out and party when they announce Bin Laden's dead. The puppets. <laughs> the sheep. Those are people. A lot of those people come to comedy shows and it makes it difficult to communicate. Because you can say something that just will make somebody turn on you right but i if you this is the one thing that opened my mind up that i'd never move off of the federal reserve bank ain't federal it it fucked me up to know that we pay a private loan by a private bank to our government who doesn't borrow money based on our wishes we are fucking slaves to the bank and everything else is believable <laughs> once they tell you that the gold standard do you know what our standard is now how we how we it's we a, weigh our wealth it's a debt standard debt <laughs> if you owe me a thousand i'm worth a thousand <laughs> <laughs> yes but it's not it's not real. Let me ask you a question about the Alex Joneses of the world. And yes. I, I hate using that term, but because there's a bunch of you, yeah. you, you name. Uh, aren't they bad for the plan? Yeah. So but why doesn't the government do a little uh, something something with them? Because they're because they're putting marbles up their ass. Yes. Thank I you. understand what thank Patrice you. says. Thank if you. they say this shit. But they're so crazy when they're saying it, and so many people are like, oh, listen to this fucking guy. So They can make the lie better by exposing it and being crazy, because then you'd have to be crazy to believe Let it. me go with that, then. So why isn't there a guy that doesn't put the marbles up his ass saying the same shit? They and all, ha- hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, that, has pa- there, like that Pakistani woman? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to ask. And has, <laughs> there, dead. and has there been a guy that didn't do it with the put, putting the marbles up his ass? And what happened to that guy? Ready, though? Oh, let I'm me talking about talk radio. I know. Not I know. To- Wait. Wait, ready? <clears throat> I'm not a uh, crazy guy. Hi. Um, in, in about uh, three years, aliens will be visiting us. and um, You just put marbles up your ass. I, it, no matter. <laughs> I could go, motherfucker, aliens is coming, you bastards. And you go, yes. <laughs> then you go, you know, um, I talked to God last night. God said we had a, we had a drink together. And it, that nigga's great. No matter what <laughs> you say that ain't regular. With the regular shit that the news is telling you and but everything, you're, saying you're it, crazy. But you're saying it today. I don't know what I believe. I, I'm listening to you, and it's a, it's very interesting. But you're saying it without putting marbles up your ass right now. No, I'm not. You're putting marbles up your ass. I'm, yeah, no, because are... someone's getting mad. Because here's the thing. Here's here's a, here's something that I've never said in public. I'm gonna say right now, mm-hmm. and it it scares me. But I, at least I'm here, and I can get a chance to say it correctly. Uh-huh. I'll never say it on Fox and stuff because they'll just chop your head off, and I'm evil. They always throw. So you don't support the troops, uh-huh. and and people get fucked up with that. But I go, the the troops are not an entity to be supported. <laughs> <laughs> they do what they're told to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm not supporting anyone that gets killed in the line of duty and go over there and, and in their mind, they're protecting uh, me and your liberty. I'm saying that they don't do anything mm-hmm. for you to support them. They just do the bidding of the banks and the government, whatever they see fit. So if I say I don't support the troops, it's not saying I don't support those people that are dying. You go, I don't support policy. 
And for people like on these on these these news cat to manipulate that, knowing that they're intelligent mm. people and they and they put that at you and they make you sound fucked up, you know that they are controlled by because the banks own the networks and they own propaganda and they own it, it, so of course if you if you take out the fact that that you are racist listen to Farrakhan when Farrakhan talks about the banking system yeah and what they do to the kids he ain't talking about black he talking about any cries there's this motherfucker starts crying but then the, and but then Alex puts Jones the, is <clears throat> losing his mind because people won't but then I, Farrakhan puts marbles up his ass by talking about flying pyramids yes, and fucking but he has told you two plus two is four you can pick up a book and go two plus two is four yeah but this motherfucker got marbles in his ass <laughs> I love the marbles but yeah. it's but, the best analogy ever but two plus two is four right so, right so you don't even have to really listen to him no more all you have to do is take, get your math book and then go wow th three plus three times three is nine but it turns out but it, but it, a lot of people think of it in terms of like a witness in a trial if you find any part of the testimony to be false or uh, you you don't uh, think uh, there, belief there's any is circumstantial it, then you can throw out all the testimony yeah it's like all conjecture we we are repeating I'm just basically parroting what I hear, right. and then with a little bit of research. I, I, and a little bit of your own I, intellect but and what do we experience. Know? I, I, I believe we shot Osama. I can't prove it. I just believe it. Okay, let's say, let's uh, then cut out the I news. I just believe it. I, I, I'm disappointed we didn't get to see the death shot. Because we... it would shut up a lot of conspiracy guys, but the White House comes out and says, well, they'll always not believe. We, and here's what this other this girl, that, friend, that part a, friend of of my, a friend me. of my woman, she goes, she was in, she was in the Army. Now, the Army's fucking a bad. Won't give her her GI Bill and shit. Mm. Don't it's it, you know? So she goes. Uh, uh, she goes. Well, if we didn't bury him, it would incite incite what? <laughs> More anger? Like <laughs> I the know, fact that Al Qaeda get. is supposedly threatening us now yeah. with violence. They weren't yesterday before this and motherfucker be, got shot. There'd be more. Threats of violence. They hate us to the umpteenth way. level. Right. You're, you're st you're They're just, on 11. Uh-oh. Osama got killed. Uh-oh. that They went to level all shit. Yeah, yeah. They was just going to basically kill us. But then, so they... But why raise uh, sus suspicion in so many people? Because by, by it not was showing a the fucking cover-up. He's can, dead! But you could find you could find some kind of lookalike then at that point and what? show a death well, photo of some guy. Because people... Because even if they released the death photo, people would have questions like, ah, oh, that's not him. The sophistication of technology fucks up this game. Yeah, but, mm. the, but the government has shit. Ah. They're Who's telling us Bill Burr? Bill Burr says the government has shit we don't even know about yet. Dude, I'm not talking about the, the shit saying? we don't know about. Because, dude, L LBJ had an iPad. But <laughs> I'm, what I'm saying, hold wait, on, hold on. Because okay. Bill, Bill Burr made a great point. He went to the Reagan Museum, wasn't it? Or the library out there yes. in California, and yes. they have a part of his plane, you know, Air Force One, uh -huh. where they it had a phone on it. Way before this technology was no, available for you, anybody that's else. that's not my point that they have all this technology. They might have other technology. My point okay, is this. The fact that we have it. Yeah. Fucks them. The internet. That they, fucks they their They are up. trying to destroy the internet. It fucks them up. Photoshop fucks them up. They can't treat you like complete dummies. They did release a death photo and motherfuckers went. This shit Photoshop. <laughs> oh, you think that was supposed to be the fucking Nigga, <laughs> yes. I God it. damn it, these, I never heard that one these before. These are eighty-year-old white guys who who are fucking still. So wait, 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 wait. Why do we? Why do we still on, have the mail? Please, please. Why do we still wait? Why the but, fuck? With all this technology, we still depend on a rating system uh -huh. that I, I, right, but, one family is in control of a hundred thousand. That it's hold bullshit. on. I gotta right. I gotta slow you down because your point is so brilliant that I. Want want to just uh, explore that a little bit so you think the government kind of like all right like let's just get this out there and see if they they, see, they, they let's bite. see what they let's see right, how they right. bite oh shit someone found two pictures oh, that we put together <laughs> <laughs> they looked at that shit and and obama's birth certificate motherfuckers <laughs> technology looked at that and went what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> See, that's just funny. It's I so, love so if you, I gotta take the other part of that. Too. Go ahead. 
if the government's so powerful, they would just find some fucking Muslim that kind of looks like him and then kill that fucking guy and then put that picture out there. Really? And then... Why not? Right. His Why technology. Not? What happens then? Huh. I'm looking at uh, Valley Bertinelli. That's not... Some... That's not really that. Dude, <laughs> technology yeah. fucks with the, the So you thing. think they threw that picture out hoping? That hoping was the we picture. Would <laughs> that was the death photo. <laughs> that was the picture. <laughs> and they and thought they, they would fucking... just let let us fl And this is the thing that kills me about Fox and all that. They're, that... Not, they're not arguing. They flushed them down the fucking ocean? <laughs> they're arguing, why didn't we get to see the death photos? It's like, wait a minute, you're not questioning the fact that you had a Muslim burial for public enemy number two all time? <laughs> this is public. If we... Okay, do you think we would have just... We still want to find Hitler. <laughs> we, we're we still trying to find his bones. Looking in South so America. You know, something. In some sh him and Ava Braun, yeah. who supposedly killed him, the, and, and, and speculation. D do you think that they would just flush... The the of our time, the worst motherfucker that ever was born. Yeah. They would just throw him in the ocean and under the guise of having a respectful Muslim burial. <laughs> Do you fucking believe that you believe that this is what I'm saying. The frustration is I can't move on. Fucking believe that. Right. As a person, just as a person who doesn't have a television. If I told you that. And I was, me and you talking, no TV, and I go, yeah, man, Bin Laden, who's Bin Laden? Yeah, this is a guy responsible. We killed 3,000 people, and he, he wants to kill millions, and uh, he runs the most sinister terrorist group ever created. This guy may be on par, his intentions may be on par with Hitler. Mm -hmm. <gasps> wow, this guy's fucking evil. Found him, caught him, and killed him. Whoa! Oh, great. What? what? What did you do with the body? <laughs> Threw it in the water. <laughs> <laughs> this is your new set, by the way. I Threw love it. the fact that Threw it in a the water? thinking man's comedy. That's, he's that's your make, new gig. He's he's yeah, but Danny says kind of turning me. No, nah, but Danny says that death photo has been around for a while. So what's your take on that, Patrice? Rehashed after. Well, yeah. that's what Danny says. That's what say, this what I'm saying. It's this well, is a guy. That, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I dismiss. I Whatever. discredit what Danny says. And he, that's just it, and that. he discredit me. Who gives a fuck what Danny says? <laughs> and not because it's Danny, but because anything. Anybody says anything, you could just say no. Nope. And uh, people. And that's the simplicity. And of it. people say, why are we beating up Patrice like we do Troy? Well, because Troy Kwan comes in here with questions, but doesn't give us any. No, he gives anything. us nothing. Like at like, least Patrice, Patrice is giving us some stuff to think about. Patrice has. That's the like, difference, by the way. I can't. 15, I can't go to that guy on the phone. Right Fifteen now. levels of involvement with every uh, thing uh, subject he brings up. He, you could peel away the layers. He explains what he's talking about. Uh, uh, but but when you get somebody that comes in and just goes, yeah, the Pentagon was hit with a missile. Uh, how? Explain that when there were p plain parts. No, there weren't. No, I was hit by a missile. You believe in everything the government says? It's like, but when Patrice explains things like, look, why the fuck would they take the, the, the biggest fucking criminal of our time and just throw his body away without anyone like seeing it's cocaine. it? No one saw it. Like evidence that you And they get threw rid of. it away without at least. Now, think about this also. It does bother me. They took Jeffrey Dahmer after he was killed. And examined his brain to see abnormalities and maybe things that could be worked on in the future. Wouldn't you want to check out Bin Laden's brain and see if there were abnormalities? Why didn't they do an autopsy? Hey, did he have those kidney problems? Let's cut him open and maybe see if this guy had some kind of physical, mental problems. Have but you instead, heard this on Fox? What are you saying? No, I have haven't heard it. Have you heard it on CNN? No. They just wrapped him they, up and, and, and flushed him down that. the ocean. Like what you said, flushed him down the ocean. I love flushed him down the ocean. Here come the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Here come nosy people with their bullshit. Quick, get him in the drink. Mm. Oh, man. You're, I'm just saying. You're, get, you're getting me thinking. Patricia. That's all it is. And then you just go and you and you just look at 
basically... I think the government gave you diabetes. They don't like this power you got. Nigga, if they want to get rid of me, <laughs> I'd rather have AIDS and drop dead than have this shit. Because <laughs> diabetes is... is a, it has to be government. AIDS ain't... Government, government diabetes. Because di diabetes is hilarious. Because <laughs> if you say I'm dying of sugar, it just makes you smile. It's like, aw. <laughs> what a sweet I'm way dying to go. of a fuck virus makes you scared to death. But I'm, di creepy. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying of something that invades your body and destroys everything makes you go oh and i catch it by fucking but to go hey man if you eat a lollipop things go bad <laughs> <laughs> bubble gum really so it's you know maybe so. sound that bad we really got a break yeah we gotta take a break we i got I laszlo gotta, outside the studio up. yes laszlo we also had the larry king thing should we play it here or just save that eh, i might as well save it just save it for another time yeah. oh yeah. really okay yeah patrice you plugging anything i'm in uh in Florida, at uh, at uh, oh shit, I'm sorry, man. Um, if you make it, Jesus, ah, fuck fucking it. government, God, big mama prods on Twitter. You'll you'll be uh, tweeting. Wait, but I'm, I'm sure. Wait, uh, uh, Marcos Island. Um, oh, Marcos Island. Oh, right, okay. okay. That gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys do that. Gig. Oh, that that place. Sure, that sounds like a blast. I, I haven't never been there, but I got. I, yeah. I'll, I'll get the name. I'll, yeah, we'll get uh, it. We'll get it out there. But believe me, you want to. You weekend. want to see Patrice? It's been a while. Patrice O'Neill in studio. Laszlo next. Patrice O'Neill in studio. Big mama prods on Twitter. Uh, hey, hey! Really quickly, because we pissed off Chicago. You know, we kind of just th uh, threw the Bulls uh, oh, right, to the right, side right, right. there. Now. The Heat are going to have a tough time with the Bulls. Yes, they are. All right, and you will acknowledge that, right? Yes, okay. yes, they... Because you said the Heat will win the whole fucking thing, and then we got Chicago yelling at us, saying, what the fuck, our team... So, I guess I, I did not know this, so I'm just repeating this, but I guess the Bulls uh, swept the Heat during the regular uh, season. Yeah, but that was when the when the Heat were trying to figure out what they're going to do. Still trying to get their shit And here's together. the thing. The, uh, the, the Bulls have Derrick Rose, and the next best player an is Carlos Boozer. Right. So they have a super play, meaning he's at the level of a stratospheric guy. He, he's, he's in a rarefied atmosphere, okay. as they say, Derrick Rose. But their next best guy is Boozer uh, uh, offensively, and Lu, Lao Deng. And they they going against three guys who were the A list guys, the go to guys on their team, plus two relatively good big men, a uh, three great three point shooters, and an older point guard who's good enough. These guys, Miami's better. Fuck, they're better. They're not good. Well, Chicago, this. but this is why I hope to God Boston just just sits everybody down and goes out like the you know just old school guys fade away cuz then they have Chicago next and please no disrespect to Atlanta cuz Atlanta ain't bums mm -hmm. they're another long lanky young team this is why the Celtics just need to just go and relax with the Lakers and just go boy remember those days and just dismantle cuz this is serious shit going on i mean it, this you got some young tough, animals man you got some tough you got tough years ahead of you uh, being a Celtics fan uh yeah because uh but we have Rondo but there's nothing else on the on the on Rondo's the got a horizon. fucked up elbow that'll that'll heal up how the fuck was he playing like that he trying to you know he trying wow this to, game know, looks good we're, we're gonna segue into this in a <laughs> yeah this fucking game looks good I love these we got Laszlo in Laszlo <laughs> oh, I have shit. to say Rock I saw star you just got us out of basketball talk because I <laughs> looked up and said this fucking game looks good God yeah it's uh the L A new... L A Noir yeah it comes out a week from today. Um, from Rockstar Games. For everybody? Yes, for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah, where's Why? our copy? I, I wanted a copy. <laughs> what, no, we, don't, we don't even have press copies yet. They're no, still being huh? stamped out. Oh, okay. This game is so big, it's, it was almost four discs on the Xbox. It's three discs. Holy and shit. And there's still DLC. And look oh, at the man. actors you have. Who's the guy? Who, who played the lawyer in The Godfather? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's, what's his, his name? name? Like, uh, is who's, this? Who's the lawyer from The Godfather? Oh fuck! You I got know. a lot of stars. Well, I saw some fucking computer pussy. <laughs> Jesus Christ! This is that's, a dead oh, that's broad. the Black Dahlia kind of thing. Going yeah. On. So these are real crimes from the 1940s in Los Angeles ah, that you that the you 40s. go to. Uh, wow. So we got a lot of uh, actors that you might recognize. There's a ton of people from Mad Men, uh, and it's this new facial scanning technology called Motion Scan. So that's fucked. That's up. what I'm saying. They got fucking actors in this bitch. And you can see like you can see Robert every... Duvall. It looks like it looks Robert like Duvall. Robert Duvall, that guy. And who's the little bald dude that's that, that's uh, really good? He always plays a character actor. Um, oh, the little bald dude. I know. I know. <laughs> What's the fucking um, 
His big thing, he played pig vomit. In oh, Giamatti. Oh, yeah, Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti is, that's Paul Giamatti, <laughs> the <laughs> first guy. <laughs> right, or no, is that him? Did, this... you, did you get his face, or? Oh, know. shit. You got fucking <laughs> William Shatner? <laughs> that's not William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Michael Dude. Madsen, I saw, I think. <laughs> what the? James Cromwell? You so have it's the, a, well, the thing Cromwell. is, it's a... Yeah, let's go back to Lazlo. So it's a detective thriller. So but basically... What were you saying about the face thing? With the, with the, with the facial technology being this advanced, yeah. um, you can actually do a detective game where you interrogate witnesses, and you're sort of looking for tells if they're full of shit. Ah, like their eyes darting back and forth right. or something. Or... Um, so right now, Than is... Uh, Damn. Is searching a naked woman's dead, mutilated corpse for nice. uh, for clues. Feel her tit. Yeah, search her tit. Man. <laughs> I think I saw something mm, under her Interesting. Tit. Fuck B D T. We got fuck you B D. Yeah, this is called the red the blood. red lipstick murder. Uh -huh. So you go to crime scenes, you look around for clues, you hold up props, um, you keep a notebook of different uh, things, and then when you interrogate people, you can point to stuff in your notebook because if they're talking shit, you can say, yeah, but what about the crow this crowbar that we found on the site? Different things like that. Uh -huh. um, and then the face will change to. Depending on how you and you can go press you can press buttons whether you believe them doubt them or you can accuse them. If you go the thing is if you go after somebody too hard they might clam up and not give you any clues that'll help right. you solve the case. Motherfuckers and you can always so there's can a you work them over. <laughs> you can. <laughs> I want to work. You, I, I'm just gonna work everyone uh, over. <laughs> you just get two people RPG? up. It is it is it does have sort of RPG elements, but yeah. Um, you know I've played some RPGs where I don't feel like I'm going anywhere besides talking to aliens. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but in this, and sometimes you start to, you know, question somebody and they'll just run the fuck out of the room and you got to chase them down and, and beat them a bit. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh man. And this and is I, in game right now. Yeah. This is all yeah, in game yeah. footage. So it, it, it looks, fucks, it looks it, amazing. It's, it's hard fucking for people star, to kind of wrap their heads around. They're like, well, is this just one big cutscene?" It's like, no, the, the capture technology is so good. It all feels like, you know, yeah, look at his fingernails are like. Kind of clip. How long weird. was this in development? Six years? years. Six years. Wow. Six years. Nice. Patrice, I yeah. have to say, when I saw you at Caroline's last, probably the most uncomfortable I've ever seen a room when you went after that white suburban couple. Do you remember this? Patrice just disarms people where they're just in front of a crowd admitting shit. And there was this white couple oh, with right. their teenage son, right. and he starts. Her, his he mother starts fucked the black guy. He start doing. He starts going into this, just asking her questions, oh, and then shit. all of a sudden, it's like, "You ever sleep with a black guy before you slept with him?" And she says, "Yes." And the teenage son goes loud as hell, "What?" <laughs> oh, and the shit. whole place just went. No and the kid was fucking looking <laughs> daggers at Patrice the wow. rest of the show. It was fucking uncomfortable. Ooh. Patrice was laughing, so I thought you were gonna fall off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> his mother took a fat one, man. <laughs> Everybody thinks their mother's precious, but they're not. They, they're two, ten toes up in the air, baby. Everybody's mother. <laughs> oh, shit. I remember that, too. No, it was, oh, it was fucking damn. good. I have to say, your DVD was quite quite nice. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lazo. I picked it up. Patrice had a home run with that. It didn't get him famous, though, unfortunately. Nah, but He was going for fame with that thing. I really was. So now he's back in our fucking I show. I think the most, uh, one, not the most, but one, one interesting thing about this game is uh, the wow. person that's playing it. Yes. Uh, Nathaniel. Well, you, this is... Hi, the, Than. Hi, you work well, from Rocks? Uh, you work from Rocks? Why would I? Why would, can I, I... Yes, thank you. I, I wanted to yell at somebody who works here for once. Yeah. Than, uh, <laughs> than works at Rockstar. That's, you, what that's you, what correct. Are you, what are you doing? He's, he's playing games. He's, he's one of our... Uh, gameplay capture artists yeah so i help make all the uh trailers and the screenshots you see stuff like that is, and, is and that so. an upgrade from this show when you was fucking on believe me anything's an upgrade from this show <laughs> was it really if he was fucking me, hey dan do you have some fucking like do you have some like nervousness where you're trying to like keep your confidence when you came in here but it's like oh shit it's these idiots. Oh, man. <laughs> a little nervous. Is he a little nervous? Oh, you mean coming back on air? Yeah, you're like, just like, oh, shit, I'm back here, you know. <laughs> a little, but, you, you know, I got, like, a nice, I got a nice job now. He's so. right. And he's like, I'm driving a car, so fuck you, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. He's the guy I'm fucking... I'm solving a crime. He's running the game. So, so do you guys... Did, wow. did somebody... 
Did somebody finish the game? Like, I mean, did someone sit and play this game and go and go do it? Someone at at Rockstar? Like, well, we have the QA department. They 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 play the game all day long trying to bust it. But Than is a member of uh, our production team. We've got seven guys. All they do is play the game and try to capture badass looking shots out of it. For, okay. Yeah, for trailer. And then, but there's a team of guys that will do nothing but try to fuck the game up. Like drive into a every weird surface alleyway, and if the car goes in there and gets stuck, they gotta fix that. So there's people that just fuck the game. And some up. games don't fix that shit. No, the, no. the games are bugs. This is amazing. It really is. It looks, um, it looks great, man. And I, I will have to say though that after Than left this show, uh, he was a bit on the skids because I found his ass literally on a bridge when I went for a run. <laughs> Jump? Uh, no, I found it. It was on the Manhattan Bridge, all sweaty. Oh, really? Yes. Are you being serious, man? <laughs> well, I, mean, it's, that, I don't even know if Lazlo's being know. serious. <laughs> what was he? The least kind way of describing. He it. was unemployed. Gentlemen. Yeah. And I, what can I get? I said, why was he sweaty on a bridge? Because he was because he was instead, of, instead of yes. working, he was running in 110 degree uh, heat. Uh, <laughs> I think I would rather have jumped off the bridge than to have Laszlo the regular I have to owe him my life. <laughs> <laughs> As he fucking tells me I was a I found this fat fuck at a donut shop. <laughs> 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 For this game a little bit more, man. So you play this, uh, the character you play is Cole Phelps. It's Aaron Stanton from uh, from Mad Men. And you've recently yes. come back from the war, from WW2. Ah, the big one. And um, so you're sort of, uh, the character's kind of fighting some demons, but he's, he's come to L.A. To, to be a cop. And throughout the game, you rise through the ranks of the department of the LAPD. So you started traffic, you do arson, you do vice. Uh, and you solve all these individual cases, but it leads to the bigger storyline um, in the game, where there, you know there's a mass murder around, and um, it, it's got some pretty interesting plot twists. But as you can see here, Than's about to uh, about to interrogate somebody. Now look at the facial expressions. That, that's fucked up. Hey Than, can you pause up just a quick second? Let me ask you this: Was now during the uh, the development, did you guys make decisions on like, hey, you know what? Maybe we should have a uh, couple of shootouts or something like some, you know, a, a shootout like that turns it from the RPG thing to just like a little bit of. Well, yeah, that's we tried to we tried to make it a nice combination of action, but also sort of like an, an intellectual kind of thought provoking thriller where you have to pay attention to people's faces, their body movements, mm -hmm. um, you know, sort of keeping track of different clues that you find. Um, it's it's definitely a departure from other games that it's we've done. It's a great way to use that technology because oh, the, the yeah. facial capture is unfucking believable. Jacob, her husband, we go way back. She was here last night. I sure, she's a regular. Selena's. Oh, is it? So you're trying to tell here if he's full of shit or if he's just emotionally upset. I uh, say he's well, full of Henry shit. <laughs> Yeah, when I first I wouldn't believe anyone uh, yeah. in the game. I'm <laughs> of course just like, not. Fuck this guy, guilty. Yeah, you just don't want to feel like the asshole that believed him. Yeah, you know? yeah. Fuck it. Now is it different endings? Can you depending yeah, on what so you decide to depending do? Depending on how how well you interrogate uh, people, um, you know, there's some clues that may or may not open up. It will take you longer to solve each specific self-contained case. Damn. You can replay them at the end of the of each case. Uh huh. This is a murder beef, McCall. You don't want any adverse publicity for this place, do you? Oh. If I had names, I would give them to you. I like Celine. I don't believe like this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't believe him. Nah. See, you just, just gonna fucking start yelling at a cop? <laughs> yeah. you piece of shit, I'll kill you. He's all pissed. So just, this is the room that we uh, we wow, did the motion, the motion scan capture. In. Look at all those cameras. Jesus Christ. They're all high def cameras. The the amount Damn. of data that it takes is. Insane. Mrs. Henry um, and how much work did the actors have to do? But not her wedding finger. Well, a lot yeah, because this. first you have to mo you have to do the walk around in the bodysuit, and then you have to go in this room and wear like crazy, you know, clean clothes, booties, and all this stuff because everything is it, like a, a speck of dust can fuck the whole process. Oh, holy shit! Um, and you're surrounded by these 32 cameras, and the lights are intense. You know, we had the, the air to get the air conditioning to cool the room down was a bit of a scene, and then you could hear the air conditioner on the mic, and so then we had to do all this. So it's constantly reinventing the way that we make games and the way that we, you know, capture facial footage. Now, now when they're acting, I'm noticing there's no body movement. They have to just 
move their face. And But they're watching the body movement that they did before when they right, walked right. around in the capture suit, and then they do the facial now sitting that down. Is, uh, that seems very difficult. <laughs> Holy shit. The other issue is, so you shoot a bunch of scenes, and then you come back, because we, we did about three different shoots, right? And they were months apart. Well, you bring an actor back in, he's, he's fucking gained wife. weight. Uh, his hair's, you know, he's cut his hair, and so now you've got to spend a ton of time in makeup and everything Ooh. else. We hired these makeup artists that... Uh, that no 1940s hairstyles really well. <laughs> hey, what this so, is like? So the so women, the women in the game, their hair took fucking hours. It was wow, intense. Man, what, now what game? Uh, uh, remind like. You're an how do I even ask? This? Like, <laughs> how do you? How do you? Uh, who's this? Who's this marketed to? Like, can you give me another I'm game that was su was successful? That's kind of like this. That. You're marketing this too, like I like who's. I don't know. I mean, people have said, you know, is it like heavy rain? Is it, you know? Um, so if it wasn't Jacob, it's then you kind of hard to say. And what's the age is really playing this? It seems like an 18-year-old would go, the would well, yeah. not be able to play this. Shit. To oh, it's rated yeah. in for mature. So it's right. there's a lot of. Ask him to come pick There's, a, there's a, a lot of murder I and mayhem. It's a very it. dark, violent thriller. Yeah. I think you'll get a little bit of an older like demo than you would for, uh, like, Grand Theft. Right um, just for the fact, I, li I like the idea that's solving problems and having to think things well, out. You said you liked her, and yet There's also some mini games amazing. occasionally, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're on the, at crime scenes. But mm -hmm. you start to really get into investigating these crime scenes and looking around for stuff. And you pick up, there's hundreds of objects that you pick up and investigate in the game. You, like, look at picture frames and... Um, Let's get out of I think that guy is innocent, though. <laughs> Do you? You think that guy? You know what? Because he, cause he cursed, a, he cursed the cop out. Yeah. So that means he got nothing to hide. He's like, "Fuck you, cop." So trying. where does he go now? Uh, well, mm -hmm. he was given some clues from that guy. All right. He gave him so, a location. Yeah. So now, um, right, let's so check out a new location. Go to the Henry residence. Uh, oh, you're, what are you running for? Jesus. I just you know, yeah, only have so much time. On, only have so much time on air, Ant. He's know? running. He's running to a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> to go get a gig. It was a little. Auto, it was a little Grand Theft Auto he just did. You yeah, know, a yeah, yeah, a little run. Uh, can, can he fuck hookers and all that little side no. stuff? <laughs> no side shit. No hooker yeah, fucking in this one. <laughs> Boom. Uh, Liza, a lot of people asking about your time on Ron and Fez yesterday. What happened yesterday? Uh, I evidently confronted Fezzy about what he thinks about when he masturbates, and it just melted, it melted down. Oh, and then no. they accused me of trying to pull an opie and make him cry. Pull an opie? No, the, the guy who's pulling an opie is Ron. Yes, and then I accused Ron of pulling the fucking strings on it, and then he's against me. Yeah, of course. Wow. He's the puppet master, but no one, right. no one wants to acknowledge that. I know, that. and he's like, why is everybody, that's the new I thing. To, I did time on Ron and Fez. I was trying to get to know Fez a little bit, and he starts crying and thinks I purposely was I trying to make him cry. I just tried to ask it's him. It's exhausting. Some, I tried to ask him some questions, and he freaked out. I asked him about his fucking leukemia cancer testicular shit bracelet, whatever the fuck those rubber things are that everybody wears. Yeah. And he's like, like, I was prepared to talk about this. I was like, sorry, dude. Wasn't prepared to talk about it. Half the shit we talk about, we're not prepared to talk about. Everything we talk yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been prepared in ten years <laughs> for anything. So you made him cry yesterday? No. But oh, he, he looked. Cry. He looked okay. on the. He looked on the cusp. Just don't drag me into that shit anymore. <laughs> what? Not you. I mean, uh, you know, are you pulling an OB? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I was trying to be nice to the guy, and then That's next thing you know, he, he fuck, He's mad at me, because I was asking him what character he would be in Batman. Evidently. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess that I was purposely trying to make him cry. And then I had one of the guys from uh, David Letterman, one of the writers, called the show. And he thought that I purposely made that guy to call to make him cry. It was exhausting. I just wanted to hang with Ronnie. Yeah, I think and I people realize was, that. And though. I thought Fezzi was feeling left down, so I was like, "Let's, I'm going to talk to Fez a little bit." And then I, I think, and then I, <laughs> and then I said, "You know, Fez, maybe you're having all these troubles because they fired 40 percent of your staff and don't plan to, you know, rehire, so they can just roll that into executive bonuses." And then he starts getting all moody on me, like, "I'm like, what are you talking about?" You know, I was like, "Well, I just thought, you know." Maybe this job would be a little less stressful if you had a oh, Ronnie, whole, Ronnie you know. says he likes to just kind of sit back and not be noticed and then fire out his lines. That's, that's what Fezzi wants. Oh, yeah. But don't put the attention on him. It well, really, I learned the hard way. And then I, I, then I tell Fezzi, the murder of your wife. Laszlo, I tell Fezzi murder. that I didn't mean it. I, I gave him a sincere apology off the air, and, and, and Fezzi's like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And then he goes walk into the bathroom, the door closes, and Ronnie looks at me and he goes, he don't believe you. <laughs> oh, Thanks, Ron. Oh. He don't believe you. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> yeah, it's also hard to tell how how full of shit Ronnie is. You know? <laughs> well, Ronnie can uh, Ronnie can play the part. Yeah, that's for sure. He knows how to pull those strings. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's great at that. Line as, as well as other things. All right, but back to uh, what's he? What's L.A. He Noir. What are you looking for? Oh, look oh, at that shit. Oh. He found something on a pad. He's yeah. doing that pencil trick. Where you scratch it and yeah, see what somebody yeah. wrote before uh, on the on page uh, on top of it. The oldest problem there is what to do about the old lady. The yeah. Yep. There's a lot of killing off the old lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of killing off the old lady. <laughs> Is this one uh, case? Or yes, is this is one case. But there's more cases. Oh, there's a ton of cases. So after you solve this case, you move on to a, a tougher case? And you can bump Lazo? into a new case yes. as you're, as you're uh, being a detective for this case? Well, there's, there's, there's elements that connect each case, uh. but each one is self-contained. Um, <coughs> and, and like I said, if you... There are cases that we weren't able to fit into the game because we are running out of discs. Um, and we thought, you know, three discs was sort of uh, the good place for it to be. But you can get the extra cases if you pre-order at uh, GameStop.com or you can do it in person. Or This you can... guy's full of shit. Yeah, look at his face. He's full of shit. Well, you, gonna tr you want a truth, doubt, or lie? I say uh, 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 lie. You know what I... you went, Jacob. You're lying. Why would I help you if you keep lying to me? Look, I'm telling you, I don't know. See, this guy's retarded. I think he was telling the truth. I think there was a fucking setup. So you can that go was through. a setup, man. For us to think that, but he was really? just like, he was fucking, he's retarded. He was looking around, though. He's, he wasn't making eye contact. His head was going retarded. down. He's just a guy, yeah. he's a fucking painter. Because he's fucking, a dummy? He's a moke. Do you think because he's a retard? He's a jamoke, this guy. A jabroni. All right. The bartender there. I fuck her. <laughs> he calls me and once you say he's lying, can you go back go and say, okay, I, I believe you. Home. Can you re reverse it and go, I, I believe you now? You can. Later on, you can start to no. get what are what are those points called? Intuition points. Intuition right, points, where if you fuck somebody that. up and you accuse them when you shouldn't have, you can I go back. It. You get sort of an undo. Is there a checkpoint? No, of course. Then how yeah. many hours have you played this game? Oh, he's, have to live with that. He's, get, he's getting a little teary, teary eyed. He's retarded. He's thinking about. He, he, he cries. He cries at pancakes. Well, he's, getting, he's, getting, he's getting accused of, of, of murdering this chick. He, he is. When did you last see? Her? I want to know how long you play this then. So um, far. I mean, night. it's my full-time job for I went to see so whatever forty yes. times every day of the week. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. And on like during it. crunch, uh, the capture team works. Uh, you know, a, works More weekends as well. So. And a lot of times they don't leave till ten or eleven o'clock at night. When are you able to stop playing this All shit, right. then? When is it is it done enough where you go? I don't. I can move on to the next game. When I tell him, exactly. <laughs> I'd say, you know what? Him, say I would fucking him. go back to that bridge if I was staying. I'd never let Laszlo do this to me. <laughs> he's, he's just laughing. He's like, when I tell him to, you piece of shit. So he plays that many hours just to find something that will look cool in a promo, Laszlo. Well, I mean, you know, with the trailers that we work on, we work on, you know, each one of those for weeks. Later, so. I think this, this mental guy is, uh, would be a good trailer. Just, you should have added slobber to him. <laughs> <laughs> we was the slobber camera. Slobber. Why did you kill her, Jacob? Uh -oh. Things will go better if you come clean about it. Here we go. That's a lousy thing to say. Where's, where's the smacking in the hot light? Gave up on that fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we get him into. You the got waterboarding in this eventually. game? No, nah, there's no waterboarding. Damn it! And the thing is, is I don't believe you, Jacob. The oh, earlier shit. cases. You got to do it yourself, so you had someone else do it. Oh shit! Why would you, you say that? Back to that up with something, <laughs> Big Mouth. Oh, oh shit. shit! Yeah, I'll back it up with a punch to the face, <laughs> motherfucker. Got to look at his notes. <laughs> or yeah. compelling evidence, Anthony. Ah ah! <laughs> Marital problems. The note by the phone suggests you meant her harm. Oh shit! You want the truth? Truth is, I was sick to death of her. Yeah. I was trying to have her committed. That's right. That was back in the day where you could just have a bitch committed. And you have different partners Damn. in each department you know of the game. It was a loss of the tramp, and you just couldn't stand it anymore. Shut oh. your goddamn mouth. <laughs> oh, he's not You're retarded not anymore. He was <laughs> no, no, he's not retarded <laughs> anymore, <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, shit. 
It's time to duke it out. Oh, punch. Kick his ass, Dan. <laughs> kick that retard's ass. Oh, Dan's punching him in the face. He just about seen rare. <laughs> <laughs> he, does, he does look very now, sling blade. Can the, the, can the fucking cop the move? <laughs> yeah. And the guy Check will run the out the door or something? Yeah. And then you got to start over from a checkpoint. Um, Damn, he cuffed him and everything. There you go. No tasers? Oh, no, this is, just, <laughs> nah, this this is 1932. They pulled out a snub nose and shot you. Back then, <laughs> fuck it. Operator, give me R&I. Yeah. And we, uh, we actually licensed real radio from the period, so I had to listen to really? it. Oh, my God. Felt Dude, there was some of it that was so racist you couldn't even put it on. I was really? like, nah, I can't Time put this radio. in the game. Yeah. You Real got an example of that? What you, because what you, what's your, your job to do? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Laszlo. I just know I'm, you work for Rockstar. What do you do? I help run the production department. Yes, ma'am. So, so you, I write scripts. I direct talent. Uh, yeah, I'm a member of a huge team. of. And what's development? What, what, your, your development? Um, what do they do? What does development the do? Death was the blood. <laughs> I don't know. So who made up this? Who made up L.A. Noir? Who made up that well, idea? The, so there's a studio in Australia named Team Bondi, and uh, the guy there, Brendan McNamara, the head of that studio, he wrote the uh, he wrote the script. Uh, he directed a lot of the uh, a lot of the actors. Um, <laughs> Oh, whoa! <laughs> Semen in the anus, vagina, and stomach. That sounds like a great Friday night. Yeah. did that in the 40s? Ah, we found <laughs> semen in the anus. I want to go back to the racist radio, though. You got an example of it? That you can... Um, was like the Jack Benny show? Jack Benny was racist ah. on the radio. Well, oh, Rochester. Yeah, Rochester. His, okay, it, boss! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was like... Oh, is that shit? Yeah, which I we did license some Jack Benny for the game, but I chose some bits that weren't so blatantly. <laughs> yeah, just because you know Rockstar is always going to get beat up oh, about yeah. that yeah. kind of stuff, um, even though it was you know it, it, it existed. But that's your niche, though. You fucking you're a dangerous company. Like. But um, and then there's a show called The Bickersons, which is uh. I guess one of the first real sort of couple sitcom kind of it, kind of vibe, ahead. and you can hear how it inspired other shows. Really? But it is about this couple that every show they wake up at three o'clock in the morning to start fighting, and he's always a, he's always threatening to punch her in the eye, and then she she brings home a she a puppy one time, and he's going to take it out and kill it. It's, I mean, it's it's quality entertainment. They wouldn't even have that. You couldn't even have that conversation in your own home. No. Henry, so you didn't want to go two races, last right? No, I mean you want to get a, a vibe for the period, but obviously you know you don't want to go crazy. <laughs> right, you don't want to go crazy. Hey, uh, Lizo, Jordan, on his feedback, video games is a brutal business. There's a set of stories online from an EA wife. You know what that's about? I have no complex. He says you should be familiar with it. Yeah, there was, um, I guess, some some spouses of people that worked at EA that were complaining about the hours. Oh, really? Um, and so, how they never see their husbands, whatever. Yeah, I mean, friends. The thing about yeah, shut up, bitches. <laughs> they're earning money, motherfucker. And that guy could have got off at five. Yeah, he stayed. He stayed and worked till twelve midnight. So you didn't have to listen to your horse shit. <laughs> Everybody was like, "Hey, yeah, you can go home now." It's just, it's just Fuck no. Fuck that. Right. Uh, our old radio show. We we could have went home at seven. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nine thirty. Ten. Eleven. Go midnight. Home wife. Fuck right. that shit. So maybe that's no, what that's uh -huh. about. Maybe it's not that brutal. Sit and drink beer. Ah, I like the music. The, yeah, so it's, the it's, city looks great, by the way. Yeah, so did uh, a lot of research between uh, Rockstar and Team Bondi to, you know, put actual brands from the period. We also came up with brands because sometimes you go, you know, when Rockstar approaches people and says, can we, you know, please put your logo in a video game? They're like, oh, no. Uh, uh, not rock star. And of course, what? this is L.A. with no Mexicans and blacks anywhere near. Uh, no. Except for getting punched, I'm sure. In Back in the good old days. In fucking the fifth chapter, there's a black guy getting burned with cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no way to believe the black guy. It's just lies. <laughs> there's three no choices. Option. There's the lying. Option is lying. <laughs> lying. Push X, liar. Wait, is there other options? <laughs> no. There's actually a button combo we can call him the N-word. Uh, rope hey, hey, rope hey, or no. gun butt. That's what you get. That's a joke. <laughs> Love seeing the old cars. Yeah, old cars. You, you got the comedy store in this game. Obviously, it wasn't the comedy store back then. It was a gangster hangout. Oh, no, no comedy store. So I'm, um, Hollywood Boulevard and uh, Sunset Boulevard, all that shit. Yeah, you guys house on the corner of fucking. Yeah, that's like Silvestri and wow, yeah, La Brea. Sunset Boulevard. Dan, Dan knows where to go. Can you warp yeah. there? Yeah, warp there. 
Oh, as Jesus, I've seen powers. In yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's this game secret, sucks. Secret powers. Where's That's what you know. Warping. <laughs> He's got secret powers. Where's the Star Trek ship? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's the Hollywood sign in the background. When it used to say Hollywood Land. Yes. God, I love those cars. Those yeah. are the cars that be on HD theater, man. Oh, yeah. God, I would love to have one of those. Look at them. Hey, get out of the way, you lousy screw. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Wait, is that a black guy? guy? No, no. Not with a white oh, yeah. woman. In yes, it is. <laughs> Give me your car, nigga. Ah. Give me your car, nigga. Ah. 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 And, and, your, and your left hand will kill you and your white wife. Ah. <laughs> of course he stole ah. a fucking Benny interracial and, couple. Benny and Barney Hill just got <laughs> their car ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should be walking there. Yeah, <laughs> get out of the car. <laughs> And, and then he, you circle back and ask him, where did he get this car from? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's funny shit, man. Oh, man. And man, then they, man. they interrogate the couple, ask the wife, did you do it? She said, yes. He goes, you can go, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Push X to let the white woman go. <laughs> uh. These cars, uh, These cops uh, the handling is a little different. Well, uh, yeah. Then, uh, yeah. It's Another... because they weigh eight tons. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> this fucking... Uh, these guys are crooked cops. Well, I mean, this he isn't part the... of the mission. You don't have to carjack yeah, yeah. He needed the car. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, this is just he, for demonstration purposes. He, he exercised his... Yeah. Uh, okay, I thought these... I mean, you could just punch a pro couple in a... A poor interracial couple in the 40s <laughs> and take their car. Like they, like they don't have it rough enough. <laughs> hey, yeah, really. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. How long do you think it took for this motherfucker to earn money to get that car? <laughs> oh, he's walking. He's, he was one of the Tuskegee Airmen. Oh, <laughs> that's, before, a car. that's before insurance. The interest yeah. rate was probably 25%. <laughs> and quality is an American yeah. So I love yes. That car. Yeah. So we did. We yeah, we, we, we recorded a bunch of commercials that were, um, you know, sound like period commercials, which I had to find people were you, were you voiceover talent that no that would do that. Yeah, yeah they, it, they it could, could do that voice. Could sound like was that. You like, no, but then everybody would say, "Look, it's, it's it. Anthony." I, I know, in, exactly. No Anthony in this fucking no, thing. No, no. They used uh, like pros in this one. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 You was good in uh, what you call it, oh, by the way. I played that game. Uh, Red Dead? Red, Red Dead. Dead Redemption. Yeah. I was the, but but the I will gun say, I, I love Red Dead Redemption. Uh, but I stopped. I thought I was finished. Oh, really? Oh, there was be. more. Yes. <laughs> it's a big game, man. After the guy jumped off the mountain, I said, yes! Then he had a son. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I am. Uh, I gotta go. <laughs> he had a son. <laughs> he, this guy has a son. Listen, uh, look at Mel from Mel's Diner. It's the guy at the malt shop or something. I mean, is he lying? That's Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling the truth. Look at his sad puppy face. Is it true you got uh, Warren Haynes coming in? Yeah. Night? Dude, I'm a huge fan. I've seen him like 15 times. Oh, hang around. So how come you so With that said, we, we do have to take a break. Yeah. It's uh, Matt Paxton is next older, from Hoarders. Uh, Matt Paxton. Oh. Dude, my chick watches that show, and I come home, and all my shit is in the trash. And she's like, we have too much shit. I'm like, God damn. Anti-Hoarder. That show will freak you out. It scares like, you. Especially if you watch it slightly high. If you start leaving a few things around the house, yeah. you're like, ah, You don't want to watch Hoarders High because you will just throw all yeah. your shit out. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to be like right. those people. I know. Yeah. Uh, why don't we take a break? So, Laszlo, the, the new game, the big plug. L.A. Noir comes out a week from today. Nice. And uh, please pre-order it at uh, GameStop.com. or You can oh, go into yeah. GameStop and pre-order it, and you'll get exclusive downloadable content. Uh, there, you can also just go on Amazon and pre-order, and uh, as well as uh, Walmart. It's what's your biggie that's already out right now? What's the what's the big the the one that's out now before L.A. Noir's big drop? What's still uh, well, circulating? We did, we did Undead Nightmare, which was uh, the zombie. The Red Dead game, zombie yeah. Yeah. with the zombies. Yeah. yeah. Listen, we really got a break because we got cool. Matt Paxton. The, the the guests are starting back up, and then Warren Haynes is going to perform for us a couple songs at nine thirty. So. And Patrice O'Neill still here. Big Mama Prods on Twitter. We will continue. Got uh, L.A. Noir on the on the screen. Than is playing the game for everybody the today. Pal Than who he works is. at Rockstar yes. now. Uh, He's got a good gig. The game. I'm going to hire all the cast offs of yeah. Uh, Might as well. Anthony Run. But I'd okay. hire Danny, except for the second that I hired him, he'd fucking hate me. Your fucking management sucks. <laughs> <laughs> <Some> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, Laszlo. <laughs> 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 Shit. Wow. <laughs> uh, God, uh, 
we got Matt Paxton outside the studio. It turns out he's a fan of the show. Ooh. He wrote it on his website. The Secret Lives of Hoarders. There he is, Matt. Hoarders. Matt, They're sit over here with people. the big boys. I know you. I've seen this guy. We know you from the show. Of course. I, uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of the show. My God. Those hoarders are out of their minds. What's up, guys? How God. are you, Matt? How you doing, How man? Doing well. Unbelievable. Uh, the Secret Lives of Hoarders. Now, uh, the show com comes out, and now it opens up this whole thing to people, hoarding. Now, we all knew, I think we all knew there were some crazy cat ladies that would have newspapers stacked up in their house. But he, I don't think it's ever been exposed that there are people that you would consider maybe even normal that just are out of their minds uh, when it comes to keeping yeah. shit at their house. Judges, lawyers, bankers. I mean, we go into some fancy, fancy places. Really? And you walk in, there's you know six foot of shit in the corner. A disaster. Yeah, disaster. But, Honestly, uh, those are the worst because they've been living the lie so long, oof. and they've been trying to pass it off. Yeah. You know, that it's even worse. I would. I love when I walk into a house where it's like, oh, it's a crazy lady down the street, because uh -huh. at least I know what I'm walking into. Yeah, Lee, and, and that's yeah. usually the, what everybody thinks it's going to be, is the, cr the crazy cat lady. Yeah, we but, always say they're kind of like the mascot of our disease now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's everybody, man. I mean, everybody. You also learn that there's so many people that are hoarding. I thought it was like kind of a rare thing. Yeah, I mean, I, we were doing it for two years before I even knew what the word was. Right. We just thought there were, you I know, thought there was people a few here were white there, trash. But, yeah, yeah they're <laughs> just going white trash. <laughs> Seems to be at least one in every neighborhood in in America. It's, I mean, the number we hear is like three point five million. Wow. But that's, that's the that's the ones that you see like on hoarders that I clean the the level five. Yeah. But the real ones, we the, the bad ones are like you know your mom that's a level one. You now, know that she's got a couple. Things, wait, what's the level five but, and what's the level one? Level five is what you see on with the cat shit cat and shit, the you've carcasses. Dead, yeah, animals. Can't go underneath. upstairs anymore because you put your bag of shit on the stairs. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's finger of God. Cleaned, I cleaned that finger one. Finger of God. Bad. Did you? Oh, yeah, I did that one. That was our favorite five. borders, right, Ed? <laughs> the one where oh, you couldn't yeah. go upstairs because the shit was oh, God. going all the way I, up the I stairs. I was sick for two weeks after that. I literally... What does it smell like, sir? Um, that was a new one. That was more like a citrusy, tangy oh. poo. It was really... What was the it? note? What was uh, the note in the mouth? <laughs> I, it was the only one that came through the mask. I mean, I'm wearing a P95 mask, and yeah. you could still taste... Shit in your and mouth. how long, like, oh. after you go home, isn't it in your sinuses? Like, you could still it's smell your, it. It's in your hair. You want to shave your hair. Oh. It gets in you. Really? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have to blow your nose for days. Now, I've yeah. seen a few of these episodes where people are just belligerent, and they have to be handled with these kid gloves. And Which I think, we hate. I think we've all yeah. talked about it, and I think probably anybody you've talked to has said, turn around and and tell these people to just knock it off. You want to punch it, them. You want to do something. And yeah, the challenge with that is, is that we assume everyone's on the same mental plane that you and I are on, mm -hmm. okay? And with these hoarders, they're on a different world. I mean, literally, their brains, if they scan, scan their brains, it's a, it works differently. And so I see a pile of crap, and I see 100 dead cats. They see a beautiful vase on a table. Really? And so they really, I mean, yelling at them obviously doesn't work. I mean, it's like having a buddy that's just hammered. And you're like, dude, get your life together. And you're I've been saying that to him. Anthony yeah. for five I know. years. Well, <laughs> at least people come and clean my house, though. <laughs> my God. A uh, hoarder's <laughs> always um, something that you have to throw. Like, you said a beautiful vase. Are there hoarders that hoard beautiful vases? Like, they just <laughs> sure. they have a question. bunch of nice shit. Where it's real hoarders? shit. Yes. Yeah. Season four, you know, season three, we went pretty extreme. We've, it got really nasty. Uh -huh. Season four, you're going to see a lot of really interesting collections that so are what do you very go, valuable. You go up to somebody's house and they got like the precious moment shit all over the place? Yeah. My least favorite thing, you see like, uh, Wait. you know, statues uh, or Christmas. But that one lady had forty thousand cookies. They have like cutters. wait, wait, wait. The Christmas room in their house. Cookie cutters. Yeah, but go back to that. Very valuable. So what, why is that a problem if their shit is worth a lot of money? It's not about the money. It's it's the fact that they've let their life go. They've lost friendships. They've lost families. They've lost jobs. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. The house is not functional yeah, as a I house have, anymore. I have new shoe boxes all over the place, and yeah. then I have to like I just gave some away. I had to find. Away stuff yeah, and but are you, taking a, are you taking a dump on top of those shoes? Holy shit! <laughs> I hope so. Wait a minute, though. That's what I'm saying. So, you, so a whole, a whole, because I'm not from, I'm only familiar with because I, you know, you watch it or whatever. But yeah, it it's, has to be something else. It can't just be you collect a bunch of shit. Exactly. And that's a great point. There's a reason they do it. There's a trigger. Something bad. Something tragic's happened in their life. Yeah. And to answer your question, this is how I deal with it. I walk in there and I'm like, come on, lady, I gotta shovel up all this poop. 
You know, it's like, this is getting ridiculous. But I have to remember something really bad happened in her life to make her choose to do uh-huh. that. No one wakes up and says, hey, I'm going to be a whore. I'm going to kill 200 cats in my house. You usually see they're surrounded by enabling people, too, that, mm-hmm. that, re- that you're even more angry with. Yeah. Like, I've seen people where it's like, why doesn't this person take control and, and try to get this person to stop? Usually the the by calling us honestly is the way they've done it. It's it's pretty hard, man. You know, put, pulling this off it, on you. It's, I mean, a hoard, a hoarder man. They are like amazing at denial. I mean, they're like the best oh, yeah. the professional deniers. And so, I mean, you literally, it takes professionals, both therapists and organizers, to come in there and get, you, get through the wall. You'll see them start crying about uh, they haven't seen their family in years. Their children hmm. don't come over. And, and and they'll say things like, my family's the most important thing in my life, yet they won't throw away something from 10 years ago that's a piece of crap uh, because it's important to them. <laughs> but then their family is, is the most important thing, well, but they're a, leaving. Can we yeah. acknowledge that, that, that that's the I asked him, I asked him something shit. he said, I go, he goes, but did did you take a shit on top of it? Like, yeah, I went, yeah, yeah. I just I didn't I didn't realize you had just said it just registered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that's a hoarder. There's a so hoarder. So people now we know a hoarder. It's just like you. It's, it's a lot of shit that you acquire, but you do other strange yeah. things with it. Something else has happened. There's something, something else, else going okay. on. It in just ain't yeah. collecting shit. It's well, not yeah. just okay. collecting. Yeah. What was the okay. number one hoarder for you since the show started? Aaron? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I hate to even bring it up, but Hannah was pretty extreme. But we did the, the chicken lady. Thing. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, the we did the oh, thing. God, I she couldn't stand her. She punched me in the face. Her. She punched yeah. in the oh, face. Yeah. She was really aggressive. Well, yeah. you, well, you, you, started chicken, getting, you started getting nasty she with had her. She 200 chickens in her. Oh, I got real. Yeah, yeah, I will. I'm different. I don't hold. I know. Yeah. Gloves. I go right at them. I mean, I, I treat it this way. I'm gonna if I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna treat you like my family. And my family, if we love you, we're gonna make fun of you and we're gonna get in your face. I, and I, that's what I do with orders. I, I've watched the show uh, like it's a sporting event because sometimes you've gotten on the people and I'm like, finally. I'm like yelling at the TV, going, "Yes, yell at this idiot!" Because that dumb psychologist ain't gonna do it. Well, I do it with <laughs> stupid kid gloves. Yeah. Uh, they have laws. I like and sometimes where you go, you going, "I don't." Well, you don't want them? Great, yeah. fine. Then don't. Right. Yeah. And then who, you walk out of the place, yeah, and it's I have like, no good. problem walking out. Who good. contacts you? Who? Usually, it's family members. It's rarely the actual hoarder. It's usually so, the but they. Uh, so, if we're seen on TV, you, you, it's safe to assume that they, they sign the contract to go oh, yeah. clean my house. It, but the re- so you've had a lot of reluctant, like okay, all sure, right. yeah, a lot of times, and we'll even turn people down in our private. I mean, I do this full time privately mm-hmm. as well. So for every one you see on TV, I'm doing ten more Oof. at home. Oh, so you're like so a people life hire coach. your company, oh, yeah. okay, like, like family members. I'm like the worst life coach. I get, I mean, I <laughs> I'm there to push you past this brick wall that you've got. I'm not going to be the guy that hugs you and gets you, you know. Six years away keeps you clean. I'm the one that keeps your kids in the house and keeps you from losing your house from the bank the next day. Have you ever had somebody? Have you ever had a situation where you go fuck them? This episode's canceled. We're not even dealing with this fucking. That's not my. I would love to, but it's not 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 his call. It's not his call. Okay, you're not the the boss of the show. No, I mean sometimes you get in there and he's the cleanup guy. I'm the the trash man. So the producers have never had somebody that they said, ah, this is just let him live in there. His company's Clutter Cleaner, by the way. We haven't mentioned yet. Let him live. Clutter Cleaner. Let him live in Turkey shit. Let's get out of here. Who cares? Have you have you gotten because. I, I always wonder when they're giving that rah rah speech, the shrinks and stuff, to the cleanup crew. Now make sure Margaret is allowed to look at everything before you take it out. It looks like the crew's standing there, and sometimes they put their head down. And it, are, are they laughing? Are they are they looking like oh Christ, well, we, this nut? You know, we do use the guys from One Hundred Got Junk, and they yeah. they're actually trained fairly well. They know what they're doing. They've they've been in more hoarding houses than. Other than sure. me, they're the only ones that know you know how to really clean a good house. They know how it mentally goes. We set it up. I mean, strategically, there's a way to do this. So you'll see <laughs> me pick a room on purpose that's really easy, and so I get them warmed up, and you know, and then I go, I'll find pictures, or you know, we'll find, we bring them things that keep them happy, and then we just punch them in the stomach and say, okay, <laughs> here's, start throwing shit here's away. Dad has been stuff. It's time. Let's talk about this. <laughs> we got to get rid of it. So do you once you start cleaning, do you do you at least go? Oh wow! But this might be valuable. Or you just shovel. 
no, no, junk we in his head. Because pictures are very valuable for, for family, especially if you've had a deceased family member. There's always a lot of jewelry. We find money all the time. Uh, I found <laughs> put a little, you put I a little that in your back, back, back pocket. <laughs> um, it's hey, hey, clean. You know, we sell it for them and give them the money. Most of these people are in uh, really no, bad No, fuck way. that, man. I mean, <laughs> right. well, you we know. one lady couldn't. Shit, this, is under, this $100 bill is under fucking buffalo piss. <laughs> we, <laughs> hey, you you money, ain't going to spend it. Money spins, man. I will, if there's money, we'll bring it to them. We found, we found a Michael Jackson thriller, original thriller album, and it was so far at the bottom of a pile that it was in perfect condition. Oh wow! It was like completely it was so, yeah. so compressed. It was safe, flat. That's yeah. still ain't worth nothing for another few years. Or whatever. <laughs> it was twelve hundred bucks. Twelve hundred really? bucks for a Thriller for the original. Yeah. Wow. Twelve hundred bucks. What was the most money, valuable thing? That's still you ever a lot found. of money to me. Uh, we found forty thousand dollars in U.S. savings bonds, <laughs> and the lady thought they were expired, and we were like, they're matured. <laughs> There's an extreme difference. Wow. Tell her they're expired. Her forty thousand dollars. with you? Oh, I'd have left with them. Yeah, I would have left. <laughs> I've, made, I've made more than $40,000 off that story than oh, actually oh, taking okay. the money. Ah, you know there I mean? you go. We, we know that these people are down and out. They're good people somewhere. My job is to find out that goodness. So her hoarding, though, if she wasn't a hoarder, she, she would have never w waited. So the fact that that, that actually is, was a bank, it, it did mature. <laughs> it held Her disgusting maturity. habit is it, was I'll, putting it in the bank, actually. I'll go with you a little bit on that. <laughs> there, is, there is good in, in everything bad. You just got to dig deep enough to find that good. And uh, what did, was your saddest moment where you almost got, you, it got to you, were like, shit, I, I feel bad, or you feel sympathetic to the level of, like, you had to maybe almost cry? Or maybe, yeah, you know. I mean, I, it takes a lot to make me cry nowadays. I mean, I, <laughs> I found farmed. some I found some, some real sad child pornography, like Polaroids, like the dude had taken them. Oh, shit. And I just had a... Jesus. Had and you pocketed those? Go, Patrice. Yeah, of course I took those. Well, that's, yeah. way to go. that's more of <laughs> an angry story, like, you <laughs> to keep it kitty here. fucker. We no, but I'm just talking about... really hot. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were still very broke at the time. I mean, this, I, I didn't start this job because I thought it'd be really cool. I was I was down and out, man. I, I was the only job. Cleaning up shit was the only thing I could do. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so... I needed the money. I needed to finish the job. I needed to pay rent. You, you were know? hoarding bills. And the problem was we found these Polaroids of some seriously nasty porn, and we were like, man, we got to call the cops. Got to call the cops. It was awful. Now, oh, you call the cops? Oh, yeah, I have man. to, man. That guy's in jail, man. That guy's in jail, man. Oh, wait, wait, so shit. he was a hoarder. I wonder if he keeps his Child shit in the cell. pornography. <laughs> He's probably getting raped, now, motherfucker. Throw these blankets away, you dirty bastard. I Explain I I this to me. Somebody, a, t a, a TV guy comes to you and says, can we please go through all your shit? Mm -hmm. At what point did he sign off on that? He had to know. Yeah, it, for hoarders, if I'm there, it's because they're going to lose their children, they're going to lose their spouse, or they're mm -hmm. going to lose their home. I mean, like uh, tomorrow. But somewhere yeah. in the back of his head, he knew he had some kitty fiddler pictures under in that under cat piss and yeah. cat that guy, shit. Well, that guy was in such denial that he had he had lied to himself so many times. He didn't think it was that. He didn't think it was that big a deal. Hey, I got it. Wow. <laughs> We got Warren Haynes in uh, the green room, so we don't have a lot of time left with you. But uh, rats. Rouse. I was disappointed in the rat episode mm -hmm. because it was me and Ann talked about it. It was, it was rats from a pet store that the guy was hoarding. Well, he, he had t they were it started with two rats and then know, they just but, kept multiplying. But yeah. I wasn't as impressed. The sheer as, like, number of rats was a little creepy. Like, amazing. But have creepy, you ever yeah. seen like a New York City subway rat? San Francisco rats are ridiculous. I've okay. heard the New York ones are as well. I mean, they're so, bigger than cats. I was excited for that they're episode, and cats. then when I saw they were pet rats, I, I was I was not into that episode as much. Yeah. But my question is, have you gone into houses where you have seen fucking rats? Yeah, I mean, you, the, the, it's not the rats. An empty house with rats is fine. It's when you see like an eight foot rat's nest that's just eating up in the newspaper of in the oh. middle of it, and you're oh, like, "Holy crap, what's shit. in there?" It's not what you see; it's what you don't see. Okay, and you yeah. smell it. You know the smell of rat urine. You know there's some big ass rats in there. That's scary. When they have caged animals and they think they're taking care of them too, that's they the do sick. believe they, that they actually are. think that they're loving and taking they care do. of these animals. And meanwhile, like there's a dead cat. This cat with like holes in it. And just pussy eye cat like that you see on the late night commercials, and uh, they're like, and, and when animal control comes, they're crying and saying, "Why are you doing that?" They don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like this thing, the, half of these things are gonna have to be yeah. uh, put to sleep. I promise you, with all their heart, they truly believe they're taking care, care of that. Is so animals. sick. Yeah. I don't care about their hearts. It's exhausting. <laughs> they are. I swear. I, know, I swear it's exhausting. I don't. I don't want to have to try to convince. I them. yell at the TV. I yeah. honestly yell like. Just burn the place yeah. down! We're going to laugh. Our, our whole crew listens to you guys. Most of our camera guys are from New York, oh, so we listen to you guys all the time. Yeah. And I'm yelling back at you guys. And y'all are saying stuff. On the I radio. picture hoarders. Uh, I, I've never seen the show. I'm sorry, but oh, it's a great show. I, I, it, you just—it's so much shit. I watch. I'm watching uh, pawn. 
porn stars. Hardcore oh, yeah, porn. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching uh, black people scream at this guy who only gives them seven dollars for their fucking wedding ring. So it's like it's just it's just what you watch, you know. Uh, but I picture hoarding people who hoard to be uh, unattractive. He, wow, well, yeah, the yeah, ones we show right. are. I would say that they're they're sad people. They're damn. I mean, when it really sums no it up. No gorgeous hoarder broad that we've ever. Had, we've had a couple. A few daughters. Yeah, yeah. I've seen like a few daughters where it's like, oh, that girl would be such an easy lay. They're, like they're, you just got to take her to a clean room. You come across any <laughs> any meth? We find drugs and guns. Dude, drugs drugs really what is it about meth yeah. people? They want drugs a whore. They guns. steal bicycles if and you, take them apart. If you see no teeth, you know, if you see no teeth, obviously. It's oh, really yeah, 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 yeah. Then you know. And we we do deal with that a lot on the show. You get there and you're like, you're dealing with the hoarding, but then you're like, man, what about this, you know, meth problem going on in the back room? That may have something to do that, with that it. That drug, yeah. that drug turns people into hoarders. <laughs> and horny as hell, you can't come. We got, we definitely have Warren Haynes, but I mean, uh, real quick, on the yes, book, yes. the uh, book is for everybody, not just about hoarders. It breaks it down to basically if your wife's keeping too much stuff around the house and you need some hints on how Throw to it at get her. rid of the stuff. Read Before the it starts. It's, it's called Before True Stories of yeah. Tackling Extreme Clutter, The Secret Lies of Hoarders by Matt Paxton. You can stick around and listen to Warren Haynes play if you want. And we'll sure. probably get another plug or two in for uh, the book and, the, and, and uh, the show Hoarders. Brought you guys some Clutter yeah. Cutter t-shirts, too. Right, because I mean... Oh, nice. <laughs> for your just, hoarder viewing I, I, I wanted to ask you another thing, though. Yeah. Uh, people seem to sometimes get upset when they see 1-800-JUNK. Like, like the, the second the trucks pull up, you're pretty much telling the people what you have is junk. Like, is it, does, isn't it insulting? Like, I don't, I don't care. Insult I the hell out of them. But. At first, people did, and now they know that they're actually going to get some, some hand care. I mean, people actually do sort through the stuff. Because it seems like, like oh, they're to coming to get my things. You, yeah. They look at it like it's treasure. And meanwhile, you're like, yeah, bring the junk trucks what up. What you need to worry about when the two guys in a landscaping trailer show up, and they're going to throw everything away. They're yeah, not going to look at yeah, your stuff. Okay, <laughs> at least you're going to have yeah. positive care, and people are going to look for your things when we show up. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. We're guys, take... thanks, thank you for all your support oh, on the please, show, man. man. We love it. I love, love it. the show. It's great. It's June twentieth. Yeah, season four starts, and wow. we did recaps of everyone that would let us come back into their house. That's we great. I oh, love nice. seeing where these people end up because some of them have kind of kept some are things, awesome, and some others are just disturbingly bad. Fell right back oh, into great. it. This is not a before and after show. It's, it, it's the reality of what happens in life. And yeah. I, I hope they're all bad. <laughs> we had some good ones. I, 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 I hope they're all bad. They went right back to collecting cat shit. <laughs> Fuck those people. So sick of the me, me, oh, me's out there. What a heart. Done with this. You, you're the same way. Come on. I know. Please. Jimmy certainly is. I, like I said, I yell at the TV at these right. people. Well, gasoline, a little diesel fuel yeah. in a match. Yeah. Uh, S- send him to the movies. Let him come back to a smoldering house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Matt Paxton, a pleasure. Hey, guys, oh, thanks so much. Fan man. of the show, which I think is really cool. Fantastic. Of our show, and we're a fan of your show, certainly. And it's Clutter Cleaner on uh, Twitter. Yep. Yep. All right, we're going to have Warren Haynes play for us next. We're pretty excited. Lazo, big fan, right? Big fan. Seen him yeah. like 15 times. That wow. Cool. That means you're going to have to leave. <laughs> 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 and if you want to stick around, man, you're more Hang than welcome. Oh, uh, this is cool. Very, very busy show today. Laszlo's in doing the L.A. Noir, which comes out in a week, right? A week from today. Oh, yeah. Looks great, uh, Laszlo. Another big hit for Rockstar Games, certainly. Yeah. I guess Matt Paxson from Hoarders had to leave, huh? I guess he's not yeah, that he big was... of a fan of our show. Uh, he was going to do another show. He's very, uh, very, very busy. busy with this book, yeah. With his book, The Secret Lies of Hoarders by it's, Matt uh, Paxson. Amazon.com. Paxton. Available now. Right. This is probably the most sober I've ever been seeing Warren play. Really? <laughs> I have been tripping my face off at some of his shows. <laughs> well, we got Warren Haynes in yeah. studio, which uh, I, I'm a newer fan. I'm not going to lie to you. You go way back with Warren? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know how far back you could say, but uh, when you guys did the Phil and Friends stuff, Especially with Joan Osborne, those shows she tore the roof off. You guys together it was like her voice and your guitar. Oh, uh, yeah, we did uh, PNC Bank. Oh, that was a great, yeah, we great probably show. That one, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was a fun band. We we had a lot of, a lot of great shows with that band. Yeah, they took a really interesting twist on a lot of dead tunes. Really? Yeah, it was a Warren twist. It was well, it was yeah. it was nice because Warren's uh, pretty much in the dead. The Almond Brothers, Government Mule. And now, and now, just solo as well. Yeah, this is actually my first solo record in a long time, so uh, I'm going to be promoting it for quite a while. It's called Man in Motion. I was reading the reviews in the paper today. The four stars in the New York paper, brother. Wow, damn! Four stars for Warren's new album. Cool. Dude, he is an animal. You can go to a music festival, and he plays with every band. Yeah, he comes out with every band. 
Well, you know, some of these places like Bonnaroo and stuff, you know everybody. You know, somebody says, hey, you want to play? What am I going to say? No, I, I don't want to play. <laughs> Just the fact, though, he, uh, he's so matter-of-fact about it. It's like bands are asking you to come up and play with them. He's, he's well, a go-to guy. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's a small world, though, more so than people think. I think, you know, musicians get to know each other, and you do the same kind of circuit, and... Uh, it, I'd rather play than than watch. You know, it's like when you watch sports, it makes you want to play. Right, it. right. And I, I just saw you at the Beacon Theater. I go every year for the Allman Brothers. God damn, it was a good year. Great show. Yeah. Oh, he's about a. I would need a. I just needed a history. I'm sorry. He, he's basi- mm-hmm. he's basically the Allman Brothers at this point. <laughs> but he was part of all the original Allman. No, 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 no. I've been there 22 years. Jesus. Wow. Wow. 22 years. Wow. No, I know, and I'm only 24. So. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, I joined in 1989. Wow. Uh, the band was broken up from 81 until 89. Then we did a reunion tour in 89, and we all thought it was just for a year, just to see what happens. You know, wow, that went good. Let's do it again. And it mm. just kept going. Mm-hmm. And were you there when uh, when What's-His-Name left? Oh, why can't I remember Dickie Betts? No, Dickie Betts. I, went and I, I saw him play at a bar on Long Island and nearly got my fucking face kicked in well we might have a dicky best story too. what happened i i walked in were and dick, i was really were dicky's wife dude <laughs> i've never seen so many harleys <laughs> outside <laughs> a lot of fucking harleys outside and i go in and i'm standing there and all of a sudden a beer bottle smashes on the back of my elbow i turn around this huge biker goes you stand into my old lady's way she can't see i was like sorry sir <laughs> <laughs> you didn't turn around and go hey fucko no. you know who i am <laughs> i was like sorry sir i'll go to the back I didn't, I didn't know you were in the Allman Brothers for 22 years. That would be years. fun to see Lazlo get beat yeah. up like a, a friggin' uh, Grand Theft Auto the character. Allman, was it, that wasn't Mike, Mike McDonald, was it? No. You know nothing no. about That's Doobie Brothers. That's the Doobie. Sorry. Doobie. I'm right. just asking. I'm trying to learn, motherfucker. You know a lot about white history. Got, I'll got, give you that. But you Jesus Christ, I'm trying to learn. He walked in, to you learn. thought it was meatloaf. <laughs> no, I didn't, you that was a, uh, asshole. Uh, no, you got Greg Allman. Dwayne Allman <laughs> died in a motorcycle accident in the 70s. Early seventies. I know, right? I know yeah. the Allman Brothers. But I'm and then you had you know, Dickie Betts. Confusing. Then you got Trucks, uh, and that's about where. So I'm an fade Allman out. Brothers in rap world, as far as they're, the they're, they're Jay Z or they little what are they? <laughs> what would the Allman Brothers be in the rap world? Oh my uh, God. What's the level? Wait, Public Enemy. With... You have to go with a classic, yeah. um, and respected, and sugar very hill gang. respected, okay. a respected sugar, sugar hill gang. gang. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, respected. That, I think PE is that's. Public enemy. Yes, respected. Old school, and, oh, okay, classic, yeah. okay but, fair enough. But, but Patrice, respected. you know a little bit about white boy music. Yes, you, I you don't, don't. You don't know I, the Allman Brothers? I, it, when I hear, I get introduced weird. When I first got introduced to a lot of white music was um, wrestling, uh, when they used to allow you to have regular songs as your intro yeah. music. So I was like, oh, shit, that's nice. And I got into it a little bit. But the, I know if I hear some famous give, Allman give Brothers. A famous riff, Allman Brothers riff, that uh, he would absolutely know. Well, let's see. There's... Just. One way out. Yeah. It's Moon Patrol. Uh, Jessica. Yeah. That's uh, that Grammy, yeah. Grammy Award. Now, these are the ones, like, that, these that, the ones one. that. I heard that one. I just got a one that you, know, that you, that you, cool? you go, a black person sh- would and should know this. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I don't know about should, but. Well, cool. uh, you would go, okay, I'll put this one I up. think most black people would like the Allman Brothers because the music oh, yeah. was born out of. Soul music and jazz and blues. And, no, I mean, but you know, a hit, though, so I can go, okay, okay, oh, uh, okay. The yeah. biggest hit was Ramblin' Man, but uh, there's songs like Whippin' Post, which was oh, a, a, yeah. a What, Lord, hit. I was born yeah, yeah. a Ramblin' Man. Say. I know that, but yeah. I never took the time to go, oh, that's the Allman Brothers. That's, yeah, that's yeah. just like... Well, that's not nice. That's, yeah. that's like um, that song... Rock and roll, you go. I know that, <laughs> but you go. I'm not yeah, gonna go fucking learn that. You compare the Allman no, Brothers. No, I Gally fucking did it. Don't okay, put me in. Don't, right. don't try to be I'm Fox like, Newsy on me. Yeah, I'm saying Fox Newsy. I got scared. Don't try to play me like I'm. I'm trying to learn right now, and I'm not. I'm gonna have to go and and, and get up. I didn't because I, I, I thought Allman Brothers was more. Uh, bluesy or whatever it, it, than, well, than are, Ramblin' yeah, Man, yeah. but I know I didn't think that uh, was that's like Ramblin' a hit. Man. Ramblin' that's Man a hit. was uh, that's the most country that the Allman Brothers ever got, but it was also a big hit. Yeah, uh, and you're right, most of the stuff is more bluesy. Mm-hmm. I like. I'm, just trying to learn. I'm a fan of Blue Sky. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Blue I, Sky is a beautiful song. I love Blue Sky. Yeah. Love the guitar work on that. 
That was Damn. a Dickie well, Betts why don't we, song. Why don't we, yeah. Why don't we hear All right. Uh, yeah, Dickie Betts song. Warren Haynes, his new album's called Man in Motion. He's got his guitar. He, let's get something out of him today. Yeah. What All do you right. want to play, Warren? Uh, I think I'll play River's Gonna Rise. Right on. <laughs> New album, Man in Motion. That's uh, River's Gonna Rise. Damn. Everybody's saying, like, how great his voice is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Warren's got the great, the sounds, great voice. Sounds amazing. Absolutely. Thank you. We got Brian wow. from Tennessee. He's been waiting online for a while. He wants to talk about the new album. Uh, Brian, what's going on? Hey, guys. Hey. hey. Warren, big fan. Congrats on the new album. Man. Thank I you. I got a car question for you. Uh-huh. Um, looks like you went with ES instead of Les Pauls in the new album tour. Um, is that based on the sound you wanted for the soul stack, or... It's more an aesthetic visual decision to distance yourself between uh, the new stuff and real. Uh, it was to get a different sound for the music, which I, I think uh, that kind of fits this this music uh, better than the Les Paul does. Uh, but it looks cool too. But, hmm. but yeah, yeah. Sounds great either way. I was just hoping the Les Pauls weren't shelved forever. No, no, Les Paul is still my main guitar, but uh, for this record, I went for a cleaner sound, more reminiscent of like BB King and Freddie King, and uh, a little more old school. Yeah, it sounds great. Um, thanks for uh, booking the show in Knoxville. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. All right, you guys have a good day. Thanks. All right, thank you. How long, how many days a year are you guys on the road? Uh, you personally, you know, I, I don't really. Keep track. I, I know in 2004 I did 180 shows, Jesus. and that's that's not counting <laughs> days off, travel days, recording, right. rehearsal. You know, uh, so, so you're never home. Not much. Yeah, I remember that from the last time he came in. What do you do when you're not playing the guitar? Uh, y you know, music takes up a lot of my time. You know, if, if I have time off, I'm usually just kind of catching up on personal time, but. Uh, 
you know, it's it's a good job when you do something you love. You guys know where I'm, where I'm coming from with that. Musicians you know? are weird guys, man, because I know, like like my brother, he's constantly just noodling around on the guitar. Right. Like, you can't even talk to him when he's just sitting around because he's just... Trying to figure some shit out. Just, do it, just fucking around. And like, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, and that's all they do. That's annoying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's all... <awful. laughs> we got a lot of people checking in. Let's say hi to Michael in North Carolina. Asheville. Mike? Which is Warren's hometown, right? Asheville. Yeah, big, big fan boy from Asheville. We love you, Warren. Thank you. Down here at uh, Beer City, USA again for the third year straight now. Awesome. <laughs> but I just wanted to call in. Big fan. Wanted to say hey. Well, thank That's you very it? much. You don't have a question about his new album, anything? No. I yeah, because he thought you just want to say he hi. Thought he'd be more responsive to I'm from where you from. Yeah, <laughs> he's like good. That's why I left, asshole. Drink your beer. <laughs> I got the hell out of there. It's not as glamorous as I you played think it my is. I played my way out that pub <laughs> years ago. The one you're sitting in right now. <laughs> God, Michael, nothing. <laughs> he nothing. Had nothing. That's, That's, what he had. Had. That's it. You got I'll, something. I'll wait. You got something. December. I'll be there too. Yeah. Uh, all right, Michael. Thank you. I used to hang on Cricket Street. How about you? <laughs> yeah. you, you uh, someone's reminding me you you might know Midnight uh, 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 Riders. Midnight right? Rider. Midnight Rider. I bet you I know a lot of songs. I just, yeah. just I ha- you have to go. Oh, that's the Almond Brothers, and then you like I didn't know. Give What's a little it? taste of that. Fucking Let's see. Let's electric that. Light Orchestra. Now I got I know about five of their songs now. That's Midnight. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's the, the yeah. basis of Midnight Rider. Yeah, that was a big hit. I'm gonna that Almond, was a, that was Almond a Brother. Damn uh, big hit. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the Almond Brother thing. That's definitely a big hit. But I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Warren thing too because that song you played. Yeah, yeah. You liked it? Yeah, yeah. He had it. It was it, it, it was saying something. That was good. Yeah. Little freedom. He said more more. Mo- he said mo- freedom's better than money. You didn't hear that? You caught that? Isn't that? You kind of said that, right? I kind of did. Yeah, <laughs> you kind of said that. That's right. Freedom better than money, man. It's so fucking beautiful. Let's say hi to John in Florida. Warren Haynes in the studio. John. Hey, hi, hey there, Patrice. Hello, sir. Hey, uh, Warren. Have you ever been handed a song that you turned down because you just didn't feel it? Uh, handed? You mean like from a stranger or? No, just for, I mean maybe from one of your friends or something like that, and they wanted you to sing a song, and you said, "I just don't feel it. I can't sing it." Yeah, I mean uh, you got to kind of believe what you're singing. You know, I'm uh, a lot of times, even if a song's really good, it doesn't mean that I'll be able to feel it or do it justice. Yeah, so that that definitely happens. Yeah, he's gone. That was it for him. Uh, God, uh, Al, what's going on, brother? Al. Yeah. Al. Ask Warren about David Allen Coe. Any good stories? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, somebody, somebody, exactly. somebody from Asheville. Was exactly. It, was it uh, a little bit daunting to play with uh, with Phil Lesh going out and playing some of those those dead tunes? Because that crowd, it's like playing, it's like a bunch of comic book nerds, sort of the dead <laughs> crowd. It's like being the, the, the main band at Comic-Con or something, except they're all on shrooms. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I thought they... Uh, uh, treated me great you know uh i'm sure there are some fans that are so hardcore that they, jerry they, yeah. that, you know that they don't want to to see anybody else playing that music and that's cool that if that's the way you feel um i think 90 percent of them uh enjoyed it uh oh definitely i, I, know I enjoyed it that was the, the main thing well, and, that was know. a nice thing it was a different twist on those songs you know the that's song- what the guys want you know uh, and, and I've said this uh, many times. And it started when I joined the Allman Brothers because coming into the Dwayne Allman role in the Allman Brothers, that's a daunting uh, task if if you choose to look at it that way. But from the beginning, the the guys didn't want me to copy Dwayne Allman. They wanted me to be myself. And the same with the Dead when I uh, joined the Dead. Nobody expects you to to play or sing like Jerry Garcia. It's like when when you lose a band member, especially one that important, the most you can hope for is to kind of stumble upon some chemistry that hopefully rivals the, the chemistry that you lost. But you're not going to get that same chemistry back ever. It was the, to watch the crowd because there were songs the Dead stopped playing a long yeah. time ago, and when you guys like fired into Saint Stephen, people went bananas. Yeah, there were a bunch of songs that we brought out that had not been played in a long time, and. 
uh, some of some of Jerry's songs and some of the Pigpen songs that I was singing that you know the band probably hadn't done in thirty years. Yeah, wow. it was amazing. Is that is that uh, happening this summer? Nothing as of now. Yeah. Okay. Who's your mentor or somebody you might have had a uh, like a, a dude crush where you go, man, I love this guy's guitar work, and you go, damn. Well, the first uh, three guitar heroes for me were Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, and Johnny Winter. Jesus. Uh, but I'm a huge BB uh, King fan, and I I met BB a long time ago, and if we've Hung out before. This but, is his uh, guitar, right? Or this is the county place, right? Yeah, the county plays. Okay. Uh, but I finally got to play with him last year for the first time, and that was just like a, a huge thing for now, me. Now, you, would you be like in, in, intimidated, or you like it's excited because it's excitement, or is it like I, I don't want to f up, or you just you've been doing it so long, you know you're not gonna mess up, but you just go well. You, do you relish it? You enjoy it? Absolutely. You, something like that. Absolutely uh, relish it and enjoy it. And there's some intimidation there. You know, when you're meeting one of your heroes, uh, there's definitely some intimidation. But uh, usually, especially with somebody like him, he's so gracious that he just makes everybody feel comfortable. It seems comfortable. like music people, and it could be horseshit, but I, I'm probably in the pop world is different. But it seems like in the artist world, it's a lot more uh, ingratiating and a lot more love between people who, res- you know, it's more respect and love. Like, comedians we you know we hate each other we play it off but we don't support each other <laughs> and but it seems like guitarists and everybody they just it's more it's love it's, it's not like as a more fraternity competition until it gets to be mm. pop fame type mm-hmm. of thing but it just just loving it seems like if people who love it love each other you know what I, mean? I, I think real musicians gravitate toward each other if you hear somebody that you think can really play or really sing then there's there's some sort of appeal there you think well i'd like to to play with this person because it's there's a improvisational language thing that happens. You, you seem know. too nice to ask this question. I'm gonna ask. Okay, it. who's a hack? Because <laughs> <laughs> wow. I because look, I had a you know again white world. I, I I looked on a drummer's list, and this dude from Rush, the drummer from Rush, Neil Pert. Is, Neil Pert. is number one on right. everybody's list now right. in white world. Right. So I'm talking to my buddy who knows guitar uh, knows drums a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I go, how the fuck can you go, eh? And Neil this Pert. guy's one on everybody's list. Well, so I'm saying, he like? like, he thought uh, Bonham, but Bonham was five on, no no more, no higher than five on everybody's list. So, okay, good. But he's like Neil Pert's. So, like, who gets the accolades? Like, like say, just, I'm just throwing, like, say, on, on a lot of lists, it's like Jimi Hendrix is the guy. So who's a guy that's on a lot of lists that you you might go, you don't have to answer, but you might go. Hey. He's not answer I think somebody else should answer that. Yeah, he's like, right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's why I figure it's just too, too fraternity. Like, but it's like you know who's the guy? Because you hear Clapton, Patricia. Oh, yeah, you yeah. hear uh, what's the other guy? The, of Steve Ray Vaughan of guitar. You know. But and mm-hmm. you just you let know. me ask this: you ha- you do have a name in your head though, right? You don't I'll have pro- to say. I probably have a bunch of names. Okay. <laughs> okay. You'd also like to keep working. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, that's what I'm saying. I knew. It's a good it's question. Just, it like seems that, like, so. it, you know, he ain't fucking it. But, it. but I was just curious to know if somebody actually goes, Jimi Hendrix. <sighs> Listen, uh, we're getting basic questions. Government Mule, when when are they coming back? When are you guys coming back? Uh, we're actually going to do Mountain Jam, which is this festival that uh, that I co-promote in upstate New York, which is the beginning of June. Uh, my new band, the Warren Haynes Band, is going to play Friday night, and Government Mule is going to play Saturday night, and that's the only time this year that that's going to happen. Right. Uh, Government Mule's taken a well-deserved break. We've been on the road since 1994. Jesus. And so we've been talking about taking a break for several years, so we finally decided to do it, which gave me the opportunity to put out this solo record. So I'm going to be promoting it most of the year, and then... When that runs its course, uh, Government Mule is going to start working on new material and, right. you how, know, excited about it. How do you pay your bills? Uh, <laughs> He's never home, man. Who, who gets your mail for you? Got a, your wife. How long have you been married? I've been married 14 years coming up, uh, and my wife does uh, a She's lot. She's a trooper. Does she hit the yeah. road with you a little bit? Uh, she comes a few places if it's somewhere she wants to come. You know? Right. And not the shitholes? No. But you don't play as many shitholes anymore. Mm-hmm. But she chooses... She, places she, she would like p- to come, she you know? it, which is great. That's what I would do if I were her too. Right. Can we get another song out of you? Uh, sure. Okay. What's it gonna be? It's uh, up to you. I, whatever you want to play. All right. Last time you were here, you played Soul Shine, which was yeah, amazing. Yeah, so I didn't want to do that again. And you played uh, Old Friend, which was amazing. You turned uh, me on yeah. to a new song there, my friend. 
I remember that, yeah. It was really good. All right, let's see. What Whatever you want to do. I shall. off the new album man that's unbelievable uh yeah sick of my shadow of course off man in motion warren haynes new cd is that how it ends on the album no on the cd no on the, on the cd the guitar and the saxophone trade off and get bigger and bigger and bigger and crazy and it uh, oh. kind of fades out hmm. one of the pandemonium I, and I, I never could figure out how to end it when i'm playing it by myself <laughs> <laughs> i was saying dude the I was at mid head bob. <laughs> you do just get mesmerized, you know. You just kinda, yeah, and then it stops. You're like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> yeah, it's like somebody yanked the cord out. I'm like, yeah. Hey, Warren, uh, I got a, I got a question man. for you. Uh, and not to call out Anthony, but he's not a big fan of the blues. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What is it about the blues that you like? Uh, it makes you feel better. You know, I mean. The people say, "Oh, blues is depressing." No, blues is what takes you out of your depression. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's feel good. I'm not even making. Know, an I didn't know you didn't like blues. No, I don't. But I'm not making, uh, and I'm not covering anything up. That to me is great because the singing's great. It's like it's got a great Can melody. Can you be to honest? It and stuff. 
No, he's I not. Because he's, he's a, a white guy, guy playing. Just say no, you're like, because no, it's no, usually no. old black guys. No. 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 Uh, zabba, zabba, Hold zabba. On. I should explain. He doesn't like real old school blues. I think he likes blues influences as music yes, progresses. Exactly. But like, he, he never got into Muddy Waters or any of those I guys. I just don't more, like like when more. every song ends like, bow, 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 Yeah, that's the one he just played. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah, it's like, nah, a lot different. What if he said, did it? I used to be an air conditioner repairman. <laughs> yeah, see I that? used to have a long mullet. That would you, would gets, you relate to him, man? No, that to me gets monotonous. But that I but like But that's not all of the fucking shit, it's though. Got, no, it's got diverse, it's chorus. I know. It's, like, yeah. it's nice, it's fucking melodic and, and uh, sounded great. Could you I just say that. you're racist? Why, why yeah, well, no, this? I don't have to say that anymore. It's like the sky's blue. Yeah, but what, right. <laughs> you, you enjoy it, so thank you. And then hopefully this will open you up to go, wait a minute. There's some songs that sound like the songs, you know, Warren did. He likes songs. You that like are, Led Zeppelin. He likes songs that are influenced by the blues, but he doesn't like the real old school down and dirty. Because why? I eat Jif peanut butter, but I, I'm sure it tastes better than that George Washington Carver crap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I then like after it's been. I like after it's been whiteified. But Patrice, whiteified. I, don't, I don't think it's. <laughs> I don't think it's a. Simple... Like that nigga peanut butter. No. You just... <laughs> I don't, like, think, I, I, don't like think this, I don't think it's as simple as that. So you don't you keep, what? I don't think it's a black thing uh, as far as the blues go. Yeah, I really yeah. don't. <laughs> I really don't. No, nah, it's not. It's uh, because I don't like a lot of white artists that play that that type of blues. Like who? Just, Eric Clapton. Um, you know what? I like Eric Clapton's hits, but sometimes it could get monotonous to me. Fair enough. I don't know. There's this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that old school George black George Washington peanut butter. peanut butter. You know how awful George Washington Carver's peanut butter must have been? He just ground up peanuts. It's like, ah, oh, no. Peanuts and oil. Shit no you get it's white, the same recipe No good white now. man preservatives in there. And it's the same shit you get at Whole Foods. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, yeah, but see, that you just brought up a good High point. fructose white man syrup. You brought up a good point, though. Without Muddy Waters, there would be no Led Zeppelin. Without George Washington Carver, there would be no Jif. Exactly. So he, uh, he, he just got to get you know, away without the cotton He tells gin. Big Mama Thornton, "Go die, fat nigga," <laughs> <laughs> and it, I'm gonna enjoy Elvis. It's very simple. It's a very simple it's equation. It's very simple. <laughs> I'm not a complicated man. Warren, who's your old school uh, blue guy, uh, blues guys? Uh, you mentioned BB King, who goes uh, pretty far well, back. I'm a I'm a big fan. I mean, you know, BB King, Freddie King, Albert King, Muddy Waters, Helen Wolf, Elmore James, Sun I House. Wolf. You know, I love Elvis. Did you like King, Gary uh, Moore? Uh, Speaking never, of a white blues he guy, was, he was a great guitar we player. Lost him I, re never, I never met him, but he was a great guitar. Still player. got the blues was a pretty damn good album. Yeah, Gary, Gary was quite a quite a great player. Uh, someone that I, I'm surprised we never met because you know, yeah, no kidding. M most people uh, in that world I've crossed paths with at right. some point, you know. Yeah, um, but I, I love the old stuff. But you know, it when I was a kid, I didn't get Muddy and and Wolf and Robert Johnson and stuff like that. It took me a while. But then at some point, if you listen to it a much, if you listen to it enough, it starts penetrating. You know? Are you a lot of guys in the business favorite guy? Like, uh, are you a, 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 a guitar player's guitar player? Uh, yeah. how, do I, how do I answer that? Yeah. Warren, Warren is <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, you know, I, no, mean, I know you're lost. not being, I, 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 I want you to answer that. I in, mean, the, please. In, in the way that, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I've gotten a lot of accolades as a guitar player more so than as a mainstream pop star, you know. Right, but that's what I'm saying. So you, you are the to the people who know guitar and the people who play. Oh fuck you're, yeah. you're in there. You are in He's the mix. I'll Thankfully, answer. I'll answer. He's okay. Well, so. Fair enough. Okay. Everybody wants to work with Warren. He's been. Uh, you've done work with uh, Dave Matthews too, right? Dave Matthews. Uh, I go way back with those guys. How uh, many bands have you been in? I've never we actually. Know I, I'm. I'm not a. I've never really been in that band. I just you we know what I mean. Friends. We'll work with, I guess. Oh, I mean, I've you at know, that level, tons. Yeah, I know. You know. I mean, I've been really fortunate to have worked with almost everyone who's still alive that would be on my list of people I'd yeah. like to work when with. When someone's you know. sick, they call Warren. Hey, Warren, can you get to New York? Uh, we need you. You got to be <laughs> sick to call me. <laughs> Well, what else do we? I, I mean, we would love another song, but we don't want to push our luck with you because you're you've been gracious <laughs> enough to play a couple. I'll do. Right? I'll do for uh for for Anthony. Just uh, just say the racist. Not, not a whole song. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> oh, nice black one. I hope. Oh, uh, see. Yeah. Like That's Colin Wolf. Yeah. Oh. I like this. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I'm tired of you. 
ready. I'm ready. Jeez. Shut up. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you. Cover up. Covering up your racism. Oh, I like this one. Warren's fingers play it just a little bit. Oh. I have to cover up my racism to a white guy. Going down slow, baby. Yeah, why don't you have Patrice sing? I, I, man, if I can remember you going down sing? slow, I, if I can't remember. I have had my fun. I... Oh shit, my brain. I'm, I'm, I'm. This. I have had my fun. If I never get well no more, my favorite part is, oh, please write my mama. <laughs> Tell her the shape I'm in. Tell her, please pray for me. Forgive me for my sin. Got the voice though, Patrice. Damn! Please write my mom. Of course he does. He <laughs> pulled that. You pulled that right up too, man. Oh please! Going yeah. down slow. He's a Holland Wolf fan because he just pulled that. Absolutely. Oh man. Mm. Damn. Now I got, <laughs> I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna be singing it in my car. <laughs> <laughs> I had the fucking opportunity to do and it I with Aids and you <laughs> fucked it up. <laughs> Damn. You should uh, get the lyrics great, up man. real yeah. fast. Yeah. You can play us out. Oh shit. What is the lyric? Oh. Give me the lyric, somebody. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm, over here. I'm up on the teleprompter. Yeah, He's too busy it. upset that somebody's cutting into it. I can't believe in L.A. people turn on their radios in prime time and it's him. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, Sam does his little show. He does, he does his show now. Turn it into his show. I love, we lost oh, a moment. Listen, matter. Uh, as we try to find that, yeah, find that for Patrice real fast. What? The new album is called, the new CD, whatever, is uh, Man in Motion. Getting great reviews, the Warren Haynes uh, <laughs> disc there. And anything else we're promoting? Any gigs? Any... Uh, Beacon Theater Thursday. Damn. Hey, can we go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hit up Steve Lee's for some tickets. Is he out there? He's right out there. I saw. Yeah, him. And that's a sellout like already, right? Oh, fuck I'm yeah. sure, right? It's already. That is such a great venue because they don't shake you down. <laughs> you can mule stuff in. <laughs> <laughs> that's because they have black plays there, and they, they just don't even deal with it no more. <laughs> Please right. don't hit me in the face, man. You get hit with a flashlight for smoking a joint. There's so many venues in this city that are just a bummer to go to. And, it, and, and this is joint music or whatever. This is sweet right. music, and you just oh, chill yeah. out. and. Absolutely. Did you have your day, sir, in, in that world? Because you, know, you look Pretty completely sober, sober yeah. yeah. Uh, I am completely sober. Mm. Uh, he looks like he's he's repressing some... <laughs> <laughs> He's there's an evil button somewhere, but he is not <laughs> dealing with that he no more. He has to be sober with all the dates he's doing. You I can't don't keep up that I schedule. Know. How long has it been? Uh, alcohol was twenty eight years, Damn. but it, it was never because I had a drinking problem. I just kind of gave it up because I didn't really enjoy it. Wow. Um, and pot last week. Uh, last week, <laughs> let's see. It wasn't heroin because his hands look good. You don't have no puffed up heroin hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm He's right there, Patrice. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm just. I'm we just can do, we can do this break report. after he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. Yeah, I'm glad I'm getting a good report. <laughs> right. Not that my mom listens to this show or anything, but uh, I, you know <laughs> she might. <laughs> Hey, we got the lyrics. Maybe, uh, maybe these oh, two. What's the name of the song? Going, going down, down slow. slow. Going down slow. Maybe you guys could just play us out. That'd be kind of cool. Because yeah, Patri- I didn't realize Patrice had a there. voice. And Patrice, Big Mama Prods, and he's done. Uh, and I'm doing... in Marco Island this weekend. This weekend. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Very cool. Captain Brian. Do you mind playing us out with that, Warren? Sure. If we got I think the I, if I'm reading, I think I definitely. <clears throat> All right. This is a, a little weird. It's going to be Patrice O'Neill, and Warren Hayes. Man, yeah. this is all spoken. Man. You know I've been enjoying things that kings and queens will never have. In fact, kings and queens can never get, mm, and they don't even know about it. In good times, mm, great googly moogly. Go- great googly moogly. <laughs>
my fun If I never get well no more Oh, my health is fading on me Oh, yeah, I'm going down slow Look at here, I did not say I was a millionaire, but I said I've had spent more money than a millionaire, because if I had kept all my money that I already spent, I would have been a millionaire a long time ago. And women, ooh, women. Shape I'm in Please write my mama Tell her the shape I'm in Tell her to pray for me Patrice, that's all right. Oh, yeah. that was, that's Harlem Wolves. You got to listen to Harlem Wolves, though, man. That's it's all right. right so. You got a voice on I'm you, going Patrice. down slow. He just said, right tell my mom I love him. I'm out of here. All right, listen. Damn. We're going to wrap up. Warren, Great thank googly, you so googly. much, man. My we poser. really appreciate you coming by. The Absolutely. new CD, once again, Man in Motion, doing great. People are going to love that. And uh, I'm fuck, I'll am i be at the Beacon Theater Thursday. Fuck that. Cool. All right. And Laszlo, the game, once again. L.A. Noir. Yes. Comes out. Yeah, you're on. L.A. Noir comes out uh, a week from today. Uh, next Tuesday. Pre-order now to avoid up. disappointment. Walmart.com, uh, Amazon. And that's it for us today, I guess. Yes, it is. Once again, Warren Haynes, everyone. Yeah, thank you. See you man. tomorrow. Great.